Use these string markers liberally. Okay. So again, this is late for me actually doing the tier lists. Usually I try to do them on Saturday. But this was a long weekend, and yesterday I was not sober in the morning. So here we are on Monday. The longer I put these tier lists out, the longer I have to wait to like watch mists and other people's tier lists just so they have different values and I kind of don't want them influencing like what I put on the tier list. This is just supposed to be my opinion uh, from personal experience and just like the utility of their kit in general. Uh, most of these units I have used at some point that like some units definitely more extensively than others uh so i have a pretty good perspective and a lot of them are mp1 but there are definitely some that are or or i have them on uh, different accounts at different levels like one account could be mp1 the other one is mp4 uh artoria for example ah oh. Okay, so basic rules for the list, because the welfare and uh, low star lists are slightly different in how I measure them. Uh, all units were using, by the way, these two sheets as most of the reference material. Uh, so like looping numbers if they're a farmer and just MP damage in general. And the way we're doing it is just going in order. Gold, uh, starting from left, we're not going to go four stars first. Uh, I kind of just want to do release order because then it's not jarring when we go from Satanta and then go back to Artoria. Like, uh, there's some distinct differences in the kits. So, with that out the way, let us get started with the OG Seba. Yeah, so this servant is definitely up outdated, or I don't want to say outdated, but she she's feeling her age. She released with, like, old skills that have almost all been buffed. Uh, she only has one skill that needs to get buffed, and that's her charisma. Uh, and then after that, I don't think they're going to buff her again. She's already, like, one of the most versatile farming savers in the entire game. You can use her in, like, literally any kind of setup you want with any Mystic Code. Uh, and she has multiple options for what CEs you have to run. She can run from K-Scope. Uh, she can do Black, not Black Rail, but, like, something similar that provides overcharge and MP damage. And, yeah. She don't, she don't get scream tied in the game though, because she had fate stay night. Uh, yeah. So base attack, average above uh, or actually slightly below average under eleven point five k, which is like midpoint, and higher than average attack uh HP. MB gain, okay. Hit counts shit. She needs a hit count buff, but. Considering one of her skills turns everything to Buster, uh, it doesn't matter at that point. So yeah, this charisma needs to get buffed because not only is it only eighteen percent, not standard twenty, but there's no other normal factor. Uh, they do not release charismas like this anymore. They always are twenty percent, and then another skill. This is year one design. They buffed the shit out of this skill, and now she gets Buster and MP damage. And because this is on a five turn, you can double pop this, or not double pop it, you can pop it turn two and three. And this lets you do all the different ki kinds of farming that there is. 30% battery uh, combined with mana loading. And you can either start from zero, start from 50, or start from K-Scope, and then you can literally use like any Mystic Code you want at that point. Pen against riders, and we're not unless they're like an actual DPS. We're not talking about extra attack. Um, Lancers and riders together. I mean, it's not the most uncommon thing, but it's not something you're going to be banking on. 
MP has no normal effect. If they did actually do decide to buff the MP, I wouldn't be that surprised because this like all it all her MP is is 20 battery. Like there is no other normal effect. She got this buff so early in the game. It's like <sighs> like you kind of wish they held off on doing this a lot. You really wish they held off on doing this buff and then they could have actually made it better. Because I know they do not want to double buff this thing. Artoria has been at the top of the Buster Farming meta for Sabres for like the longest time. I don't know if they actually want to bring her back to the top. Uh, oh, right. I forgot to... A plus. So she's going into A plus for right now. We'll do the EX later. Uh unless like only if a unit is like actually belonging in there. Are they gonna go right into there? Uh but there are so many AoE buster sabers in the game. Like literally. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. That actually can, like, yeah, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and like most of them can do some kind of three turn farming. But the gap has significantly shrunk. Artoria is not the best in any scenario, like, she's never gonna be the best. And it has to do with like how her MP was buffed. Like in every category, she is going to be beaten out. Uh, besides the fact that Artoria can do this uh, super scope with only double bitch and doesn't matter what her Mystic Code is. Mystic Code does not matter for her farming. And she blows a lot of these servants out the water. If she was to go into EX, it'd be for versatility alone, not for her actual, like, full performance. Okay. Gotta get better at the stream markers. All right, next. Salter. This servant, very different, because when they released this servant, they gave her different MP damage modifiers than Artoria. So let me bring this back up because I I need to show this off because they do this they did this for the other one too. Base scaling for an AOE Buster MP is three hundred percent. Her base is four fifty. They literally made her MP three, off the rip with no buffs. And she has higher MP scaling than a, than a buffed MP. It's what, like, at the start of the game, I'm told that Salter was better than Artoria because of this. Uh, but with the farming meta, like, that changed. And now it came back around when they give her her first skill buff. Base attack, super high for a four star. Four star saber, I mean, like, Berser Berserkers come up here, but like, 10k is a very good place to be for a four star. And when you level to a level her to 100 uh i believe she starts matching artoria she has more raw attack than artoria if that's something to say good about salter or something bad to say about og saber that's that's your decision same exact hit counts there is no difference here this buff you get this battery per hit per hit so every Buster MP, you get a 30% battery along with it being three times three turns. And this does not get used up per hit. This is per MP. So her MP has a total of 90% battery. And that is if you do not double stack this. And if you're using Vich, you're probably going to double stack that this and it turns into 60% battery after the first MP. So yeah, he does not need... The uh, Salter does not need uh, Rising Mudrain 
for the overcharge, she can just run straight black rail. And there is no servant on this list that comes close to this damage. Closest is Mordred. If she wasn't held back by Rising Mud Rain, she would be hitting close, if not more than Salter. Yeah, no, no, no. If she had Black Rail instead of Rising Mud Rain, she'd probably be hitting uh, close, if not more than this. Just because this is level 80 Salter, not level 90. First skill, 20% bat or second skill, 20% battery static. Does not need to be leveled. You level it for the cooldown. And 20 stars. Again, nice. Uh, especially with Vich. Never uh never a thing is too many stars for Buster, especially when you can choose when they are. And this is the worst fucking charisma in the goddamn game. This needs to be fixed more than so uh sabers. Because this is horrendous. I brought this up in like one of the videos. Uh, I think it was last year. If you double stack this, it is only 3% more than Gilgamesh with just him popping it once. You'd have to pop this three and a half times to match what Gilgamesh has from two pops. That is the stupidest shit for scaling that I have seen in this game. And I really like they gave her such a goaded buff. I I hope they start fixing charismas again. Cause this is so fucking bad. They fixed this on uh Gwen and Lancer Alter. And they gave her power bonds. I, I don't know what they're gonna do for uh Salter, but it, they've shown that they're open to it. And all it takes is one time for them to buff of the skill rank, and it's going to happen eventually. Again, anti-rider. I mean, her black rail looping, it comes up more because you just want more damage in general. And MP is, like, literally the same. It's 10% here, but with her getting so much refund on the skill, like, it really doesn't matter. If they bu like if they ever buff this, they don't really need to touch this because it, it doesn't matter in the long run. But all Salter is going to be is a farmer. That's kind of it. Where are you, Salter? You're here. There can only be one AoE Buster farmer. Uh, and I don't want to just put someone up here like willy nilly. There, it's stiff competition for Sabres. All right. Next. Nero. Yeah, you're not coming anywhere close to EX. Nowhere close. Base attack, 9.5k about, which is like, this is closer to what's normal for Sabres. It counts are a lot better. I mean, extra attack is much better. It's more modern. But these are not great hit counts whatsoever. Her refund is an issue, which is like just, it's just year one. It's just year one. Character has a shit ton of costumes, and the smugness is real, but this is not... Character tier list is gameplay. Uh, so, yeah, this 20... Oh, no, it is 30. Why did I think it was 20? Uh, with this, she is able to start, like, cleaner with... Uh, uh, just farming, but it is you are doing a lot to try to actually farm with her. She is much more catered to like soloing stuff because of her third skill than she is actually farming. Uh, like she, oh, wrong sheet. There is a reason she's not on this list and why AoE art sabers are like a die, like a rare breed for farmers. Like it gets to the point where you have to brute force charge, which why why would you be doing that? Right. But 
I mean, it's significantly better than what she had before. Like, Mental Diva for is cool, and a 2k heal. That's cool. And they just added on to effects for the buff. It being on a 5 turn is really nice, though. Like, Art Servants, you do want the low cooldowns if you use them with Tomomo, because then you have, like, 100% uptime. This, awesome that they buff Imperial Privilege. And with the command code, you can kind of get this more reliably. But it's mostly, like, this part being guaranteed is uh, pretty nice. 30% arts. And it, you have a chance to get 50, but it always depends on what battlefield you're on. But Waterside and City aren't that uncommon. We don't see City nearly that much anymore. Uh, but it, it shows up. Yeah, this was this was just a solid buff for a skill where if you get lucky anyway, like this is such a disgusting skill on a five turn. Like actual any cooldowns makes this like goaded. But the 60%, it sucks. And then Invictus Spiritus. The whole whole part of her uh her identity. That distinguishes her from Draco. Uh, fun fact, uh, I did not even know she had a guts like this uh, until after I watched Fate. Uh, what is it? Oh, my God. What I, whatever the anime that people don't like is. Like, I didn't even realize she had guts because I never, I wasn't using her by the time I was watching that. But that was... Last year or a year before last? I think I think it was last year that I like finished watching it. Uh but yeah, the guts, I didn't realize how big of a part of her lore this actually was. But three times five turns. With it being such a low HP, like it's actually gonna come into use, but you do have to time this a little better and hope for any kind of cooldown because yeah like 600 this is gonna go really quick if you don't have healing command codes on so if you're soloing with her like you kind of have to you can put the buff success rate on but you're going to need like healing a lot otherwise she's just gonna die like she's not gonna last that long Like, this is a solid heal, but you cannot rely on it solely. She does not have a defense or damage cut. Anti-Assassins make sense because of Lacosta. Uh, if you want to do farming with her, <laughs> sure. Sure. She's not black rail looping. That's for damn sure. She is not black rail looping. Uh, it just makes easier start up, but yeah, one hit AOE R T M P. It's the same reason you don't farm a shoot ten doji, like you are you are stretching it at that point. Uh, defense down one turn, it fucking sucks. Like not only is it one hit, it's nice that it's defense pierce, but you're not refunding from this very well, and then you can't even ramp this up. And it's not like it's not even a number that justifies one turn. Like this is a ramp up effect for three turns. Not like a one turn is like fifty percent defense down. Yeah, she's doing she's doing a whole lot better though. She's she's doing a whole lot better. You could you could do a lot worse than her. You can do so much worse than Nero. Like, I would take an MP1 Nero over probably MP5 Ellie. And I'm not I'm not even joking about that. I would use like Vich on Nero before I would use Vich with uh Brave Liz. That that is how shit that welfare is to me. All right, next up, Sumanai. So 
So for people that actually have him high copies, he might be a better farmer if you're in an event where you like guaranteed have a 50% startup. Uh simply because his loop is pretty clean. Like MP1 Sum and I like is is one turn one and two not that great. His turn three, holy shit. It like triples almost quadruples depending on how much investment you actually have. Yeah, that is crazy damage spike for how much more he gets. Uh does he actually have MP damage? No, so it actually makes him more impressive. What like that is damage spikes as much as it does. Anyway, very low base attack for a four star. I actually forgot it was this low. High HP to compensate. Yeah, at level 100, he's like probably at level 90. He's setting at like 15, uh, 50, uh, 15,500. So, like, even more than Saber. All of these servants are Saber. I can't be sa Artoria. Artoria. I got like, I got to be more specific because everyone on this list is Saber. Uh, but yeah, low attack. So if you want this number or if you, yeah, I'm not clicking the right button. If you really want to close this gap, uh, you probably, it wouldn't be the worst thing to grail him. Like at least up to 90, just so his attack is like around 9k, but that's up to you. And it really depends on like, if you have the AOE, uh, five stars which because there's so many, like it's either you purposely rolled for them or you got spooked by them at a certain point. Like, I think unironically, I have more copies of Artoria on NA than I do Sumanai. So that, that really just goes to show how rare some of these servants can be or like four star versus five star rarity. All right. Anyway, he is going to get this buff on NA, like, in June for Trom, and like, for how clean his loops start getting, like, 30%, and he could double stack this, I think he's a better unit than, uh, like, uh, Sigurd. Sigurd, as a single target, like, loses in damage, I'm pretty sure, to Sumanai, which is just fucking sad. Especially because Sumanai uh yeah like he doesn't have all the consistent buffs but if you're fighting dragon like sumanai is just more consistent because he has power uh we'll get into it but he has power mods stacking with super effective for the same exact niche yeah so 30 battery important for buster mp gen 37.5 less important but it's still nice for when you're not in a farming situation like they're doing, you need the face cards. Uh, and you don't want to brick your unit with Oberon. And then 30% attack. Again, double stack with bitch. This is probably going to get buffed. Disengage is not a skill that has avoided getting buffed. Like most uh, servants in the game that have disengage have gotten it buffed. Or not most. About half. Uh, they don't make this skill anymore. If you notice that these are all year one servants that have disengaged, like if a servant has a disengage, they call it something different. This ju this just isn't enough in this day. So he could still get this buff. Uh, I don't... a hundred. I don't think they're going to get him more offense. I think this would be like an end roll or something. Like the Ryan Gold. No, 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 they already actually did this for this. Um, art like armor of Fafnir. Like they'll they'll call it like armor of Fafnir, um, and it will just be like probably invul for like three turns or something or three hits, three turns. Uh, and then I don't know, maybe one other thing, and we'll call it a day. Maybe stars, and then the skill. He always had this anti-dragon power mod uh, and defense against dragon. Like, he's he literally anti-dragon. 
And then Cherry on top, they gave him a 50% Buster buff, which, uh, again, you can pop turn two and three, just like uh, Artoria. Oh, my God, this is going to be hard not calling her Saber. Uh, Anti-Saber, this actually does come into play because a lot of dragons are also Sabers. Like nine out of uh, 40. He just gets a free power bot on. So should you bring him to fight type neutral? Probably not, but it's, this is like, it's one of those cases like Mordred where like her active niche, like is affected by this. And it's not a small power mod either. It's 80. And MP buff. They made it so he got MP gen, which just makes it so even without buffs, he's still able to keep spamming his MP. And it is anti-dragon, so it's still going to do good damage even without that many buffs up. Yeah, his, his problem is like low base stats. And he need, like he has to be 50% or he can't do it in a category where a lot of them can do it without it. Uh, he can obviously do super scope, but yeah. This A, he's just solid. If you're fighting dragon, he goes to EX. But he, like, he is functional. He is functional and works well in current systems. But again, it has to be dragon has to be dragon otherwise it again like it's not bad damage like this isn't bad it's just not compared to other servants like it's not good anymore he was comparable to mordred uh that shit ended real quick that shit changed real quick Uh, all right, next, all Terra. This character is hardest hitting 50% CE, and I don't think they're ever going to buff her again, even though her MP effect is shit. Uh, I don't think they're going to buff her again. Make sure I mark this. Oh. All right. Base attack, 12.3K. Good for a five-star. Again, above 1150 or 11,500. HP low-ish. Not super low, but like if you're below 14K, uh, you are probably going to get hit. Uh, you Like you're closer in danger to getting hit by a straight crit. Yeah, can't English. You're closer to dying from a straight crit. Because again, Buster, you're not exactly like survivability is not your primary concern. I don't know, costume looks nice though. MP charge is the same as normal year one sabers. No use talking about this. It is like literally the same shit as Artoria. Tactics. Uh holy shit, this is so goaded. Defense buff strip and then party MP damage. Like there are better ones for farming as like a uh esports, but this is just fucking solid because it's two different esports uh utilities. So even if you don't use her for esports, yeah, like this is this is pretty uh pretty okay. If you need both of these things, which for a lot of esports you do care more about this. But this that this will come up definitely as a like a turn two. You wouldn't start with this. You would not start with this unless they come with like some crazy defense damage cut that's also removable. But yeah, good for herself because five turns she can double stack it with bitch. They had to buff this skill like natural body. This skill is so shit. It is so shit. 
every unit but Kintoki has gotten this buff. There aren't that many units that have this, but Altera got it buffed twice. Twice. Because it wasn't enough. So 30% battery along with crit damage, uh, debuff resistance for offensive buffs. So the ones that would stop her. Uh, yeah, good luck. You need like, you would need like 200% chance to land a debuff. And then you'd still have to be fighting ma magic, uh, for a 60% chance. Like if you're if the debuff isn't like a 300% chance, it's probably not landing. Uh 3k heal and 3k star weight for one turn. Again, she drops her own star, so this is nice to have in her own kit, not fully reliant on bitch. And this skill, I don't think they're gonna buff. It is just crazy. They actually released a good skill in year one. 30% attack for three turns. And 15 stars, again, on five turns. So a lot of her... This is the only skill you're not popping on turn two, but you're double stacking these two on turn one, which shows in her farming why these two... There's not that big of a gap uh, in comparison. There's a huge gap here. This is actual three times more damage. But here to here, it's not like a slow ramp up. She starts off doing good damage and then she just does even more good damage without having to rely on uh, one turn buffs. Anti foreigner. Uh, if you play at Extella, you know, you know. Uh, you're going to need this. And then, like I said, her MP. At least it's three turns. Well, holy shit. This is what she had originally, 10% for three turns, and it didn't even proc burst. Still wish this would proc first, but I, I will take the 20% in challenge quest stuff. I'll take it. When Buster doesn't give defense down, I'll take it. Not going in A+, plus though, because not versatile. Like, she can kind of do multi-core, but, like, she all she is doing is hit she she hits harder than him and if you have high copies of him you start doing the, around the same damage so uh, they're just more versatile and they can output more damage so i can't i can't exactly put them in a plus She is, like she is better for events though than these two are. Uh, if the event has a fifty percent CE, if they don't, these are better. But that also means for like farming efficiency, like you're not using the event mod CE, like you're just doing drops. Like these two definitely shine more. All right. Uh. So yeah, blocking. Oh. Fuck. Thank you. Thank you. I did not want to have to redo this. All right. Next up, Dion. Yeah, so this is a tank that literally can only tank and not do damage. Uh, Andromeda just came out. She is a tank and she does actual fucking damage. Uh, I know it's not fair com to compare a literal number 10 servant created to number 403, maybe. I don't know off the top of my head, but I think that's probably close. 403, 402, 404, 5. I don't fucking know. Dion. Uh, Okay-ish attack. Honestly, surprised more attack than uh, Sumanai. Uh, but just low, like, I don't, I don't know why the one has as much attack as they do. Like they should definitely have like way more HP considering they're an actual tank. Uh, MP charge. It's year one numbers. I really don't want to talk about this shit. We all know it's, this shit is going to be ass until year three sabers. 
My I have mine true. Dodge and defense. Unfortunately, I have mine true. The the skill isn't buffed often. Sorry, did I say often? I meant never. They never buff this skill. So this skill probably not gonna get a buff for Dion. This is this is disengage with a different with not a heal. But three turns of a hundred percent debuff resistance is really good for a tank. Uh it stops most shit from landing, and you have a cleanse before you even pop this. So any debuffs that are already on, cleansed off. Taunt to sell, uh, three hundred percent. This is the normal one. Uh, uh, George has this. Europa, uh, Andromeda. I keep saying Europa. Andromeda has this. Uh, five hundred percent. Three. Uh, oh no. Uh, Andromeda is like 300%. Well, you guys know what I mean. Like, oh, I can't fucking read right now. Okay, it is 300% taunt. It's a 500 chance to land it on yourself. So, you like, it's literally impossible for you to avoid this unless you have debuff immunity. I don't, I, I'm not testing shit like that. But yeah, 300% chance to get a hit and a heal. I think they need to put a guts on this skill. Dion needs a, a guts because right now they're relying heavily on soft defense to stay alive instead of like hard survivability. Like, I mean, this is hard survivability, but it's only for a turn and sure hit is way more likely to pop, pop up than invul pierce. Anti-assassin. They hit a lot, but you should not be getting this event. It, it doesn't matter. And Dion's not even doing damage. Bruce's attack, Bruce's defense. At MP1, this is... It's normal scaling, but it's still shit. If you only have MP1, you really shouldn't be using Dion. MP5, this looks better, but... And a 30% chance to charm. Oh my fucking god. There is no issue with buffing this skill. I mean, this MP. If they double buff this, it's not going to do shit. Well, holy shit. AoE 30 charm. The fuck? This is never going to land. Like, at least with... At least base 40 is, like, what you have for, like, the AoE MPs, like, Kashin Koji, Medusa. They have, like, a 40% chance to stun. And, like, despite that, it feels like it lands pretty often. But this is still less than a 1 in 3 chance. Well, those are above 1 in 3 chance. Like, 10% kind of makes the difference. And, like, charm, like, mental debuff resistance is also more likely to be showing up than, uh, like, straight up stun resistance. Uh, uh, like, they're functional, but, like, there's no reason to use them. There, there is absolutely no reason. They don't provide any party utility whatsoever. They're not going to be outputting damage. Not don't use, but not good either. Yeah, the, I, there is no reason to use the servant. They function well. It's just the no buffs. No, no buffs in how long? Actually. Six and a half years. They fucking forgot about this servant. Six and a half years. Holy shit. All right. Next up. Okitan. Oh, Okita. Not Okitan. Okitan is uh, Alter. Alter Ego. All right. Sakura Saber. Okita Soji. Okita san dai shodi. There is like serious gap moe with this character. There is some serious gap moe. 
Like not like it's much more jarring than it is with Musashi. Like Musashi goes from eating udon to like cutting people's heads off zero to one hundred. Uh, Okita is like. Okita is like talking some nonsense with Nobu and like coughing up blood. And then the next second, she's going on a fucking massacre. Like, no survivors, dead eyes. Oof. But I can't actually talk about something other than just skills off the rip. Uh, her gains are really, really, really stupid. Like Jack levels of stupid. She this is she is carried by her hit counts. But only the quick hit counts, not these two. Base gain's good, but she doesn't have unless like only her face cards are giving her good gains. Good base attack. Low HP, but this again makes sense because of the tuberculosis. Like weak constitution, they get they're never gonna not meme that skill. That that skill, just like migraine, they're never gonna stop memeing it. I hate the Shikuchi buff. I really, really, really fucking hate it. Because if you have quick cards when you pop this, which would make sense for a mighty chain, if your M, like depending on how high the copies of your Okita are. It might make more sense to pop the MP first, as it should be. But if you have a super high invested one and one with black row, you're actively giving up more damage by not attacking with this, uh, attacking with the quick cards first. And then you run into the issue, well, now you don't have refund afterwards. So you have to choose between high MP damage or refund and possibly even more damage afterwards. I hate that this is a one turn buff. I fucking fucking hate it so much. Uh like this is one of the buffs that I I never like. Like for Mighty Chain purposes, it's different. Cause you can put Buster Card first, MP, and then Arts, and then Arts not gonna do the most damage, but it is gonna get the benefits of uh Arts card refund. And the extra attack is going to uh get the full benefit. Like you should like the thing with the with Shikuchi, if you are not doing a mighty chain, you really shouldn't be using it. Because it it just works so much better in a mighty chain. Or brave chain. Sorry, brave chain. Mighty chain even better, but brave chain in particular. Uh to experience the full power of this buff. Second skill, five turn cooldown, star weight. Uh, 50% crit damage, 30% battery. Again, needs it for farming. Uh, and, or multi-core. Okita definitely fits multi-core way more because this is one turn. And because you can, like, cater whether you need refund or damage. It's like, it, she's not an actual farmer, but she's also single target. But I just personally don't like not having good options with this uh in specifically challenge quests i really don't like this for a challenge quest uh now i of mine false do they do have buffed this but they've only done it once so it could happen in the future same from i of mine true but it's not likely to happen like this was this year while charisma and tactics and disengage have been being buffed for the last couple of years. So not 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 a bad thing for a quick unit to have consistent crit damage. Definitely not a bad thing. Anti Avenger for Mao Nobu, I'm assuming it. Uh, uh, no other Avengers she really has beef with. Yeah, no, it could it can literally only be uh Nobu. There, there is no other option. 
They weren't going to give her anti-Berserker, and they were not, like, there's no point in giving her anti-Archer. You wouldn't bring her to fight Archer Nobu. Defense Pierce, again, super good on a single target, at, but the reduced defense for three turns, annoying that it doesn't proc first. First, I'm actually looking at this. Uh, yeah. Okita, it's really hard. With Shikuchi, she can go up far higher than most other in the class. But it's still not, at MP1, it's still not higher than Musashi. No matter how much you ramp up with Shikuchi, you cannot beat Musashi, like, raw damage. Again, this is only one turn because she has a buster buff, but they have just roided the shit out of Musashi. And then they made it so she has, like, stupid refund, Sargen, everything as well. He's not here. She's, yeah, she's here at A. Again, this list isn't exact. I will probably readjust things. Like, well, Suman and I could easily go down. This isn't the be all end all list, but yeah. Like, she's not a bad servant by any stretch of the imagination. She is very functional at what she does. Like, if you put Jack high, like, and her skills suck and her MP is gimped, like, you can't put Okita in the same, like, you have to do the same treatment for Okita. And she has an even more functional kit than Jack. All right. Next. Mordred, the start of the upset for Buster Farming meta in terms of AoE sabers. Because her buff to be able to use Rising Mud Rain came before Salter's buff. And for the longest time, Mordred was hitting, was matching Siegfried because she had a one turn Buster buff. She did not, and she couldn't double stack it. Base attack, average, high HP to compensate, like father, like son. Uh, even though she has more raw out, uh, power than their father. Tor weights, uh, slightly better hit counts. But not by that much. He, uh, Mordred is supposed to be critted on Arts Guard. They have enough stars to be able to do it. Three times three turns. Significant improvement from a one turn mana burst. 30% crit damage for three turns and 20% attack. They did not want to. She wasn't going to get Charisma. Because like even in history, like people were against Artoria, they weren't moved by Mordred. Like Mordred was using what they already felt. Uh against like not understanding Artoria to like inspire people. It what it wasn't her words, it was the situation, which is why she would never get charisma. But yeah, this is also something uh, Another thing that can also be double stacked along with the buster buff. And you can do it turn two. So that is why her damage shows like pretty well turn one and turn two. Like, like even more than Altera. Because Altera doesn't have a buster buff. It's why her numbers are better for turn two. But the gap is way more noted. Actually, it's the same gap. No, it's a bigger gap here. Bigger gap here. 
This is 6,000. This is 5,000. Second skill, star weight for buster cards. You're using her with a bitch, so it's not like she didn't need that. She didn't already have this. 50% uh, crit damage uh, three times three turns. Uh, depending on how, like, if the cards get reshuffled, it might be like three buster crits. And 15 stars. Again, five turn. So you can double stack this on turn two. And third skill. Full cleanse, 50% diva, uh, defense, and a 30% battery. This She had this battery before Artaria had her battery. Thus, she was able to actually do farming, like, before uh saber like were is it before i don't know like, I, like me trying to interpret year one farming when i never played year one uh yeah no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna step on the toes of the vets decent uh magic resist again anti saber but because she's anti arthur A not insignificant part of them are at least sabers, and then you have two lancers and berserkers. So even like there's only one archer here that you cannot bring Mordred to fight. Everyone else here, she is getting oh funny Toria too, but everyone else she is either doing neutral or she is doing uh I believe two times damage, and then these she gets to close the gap. MP five hit Buster AOE already buffed and twenty battery instead of the ten when she released. This makes huge difference for the Buster farming. If she did not have this twenty, she would not be able to use Rising Mud Rain because this gives her the thirty, and you can use Oberon's twenty to bump up to fifty bitch battery, and then you're cooking for uh turn three. Again, she was highest, and she's better out of all three of them. This is the like high difficulty farmer if you have higher copies. This is the versatile farmer, and this is uh more challenge quests just because again, defense, cleanse, uh lots of crit damage, yeah. Like you do, like you could use all three of these for farming, but they're real. They really shine in different areas. All right, so Nero Bride, biased, but this is first EX, not as single target arts DPS, but as a support. Yeah, she she is not not being placed up here in EX as a single target like arts farmer. She is being placed up here as a support. Nero Bride is someone that act like lets well like I don't want to say welfare specifically, but she caters to units that can like are lacking charge in their kit. Because every unit can unlock mana loading. It just depends on how high the bond is. But Nero Bride allows like quick and arts units that don't have batteries to A, start with better CEs or B, just have uh, cleaner loops uh, that do not require like using Oberon or Command Seals. She kind of enables them to just start from 50 and then it's clean. 50 plus uh, refund. So base stack, normal five star numbers around the average HP, little lower than I would have wanted for a support, but it's, again, it's whatever. 14 uh, K isn't the lowest, but it is low for a support. Uh, special little alignment here. If you see, like, she has chaotic bride, so anything 
that is like anti uh evil, anti good, they're not going to work on her. Uh or like just norm like uh Anderson. Anderson's um first skill buff from re- uh recently. Uh she like if you give her like the evil trait, the good trait or whatever, she's able to get both the buffs because when you give someone evil trait, you don't take away that they're chaotic good. You're just making them chaotic good and evil, uh, like Arjuna Alter. They will get both effects if I'm not mistaken. If I'm wrong on that, someone please call me out on it. Hit counts. Uh, they had. They actually did adjust the hit count. Uh, Oh, old, old attack animations. Yeah, and like uh, closely after they buffed all her hit counts, or she bu- they buffed uh, either her extra attack or her arts and quick. Uh, just have more hit counts. So just better refund for her. That's her as a DPS. As a support, 45% MP gain and 30% battery. I use Paracelsus a lot for farming. Like, a lot. Uh, he is maxed out on... I know for a fact on NA, he's maxed out. Uh, and I think I'm working on him on both my JP accounts. But pre Shufu. Uh, Paracelsus and Neurobride were like go tos for uh, looping support. These days, Shufu is in general better because she does very similar things to these two, but lower cost and she has battery and she works way better with arts. Uh, but for Quick in particular, they provide prefer Neurobride because again, they all can have mana loading. 30% battery, right out 50. And then quick servants eat MP gain up like crazy. They need it. It's part of the reason why Andromeda isn't looping like cleanly. It's because she doesn't have MP gain or kit. But she is supposed to be get, getting gain through getting hit. So it's like uh, she's not supposed to be looping, but they made her able to do looping. Uh, but yeah, if you put near bride, it fixes 90% of the issues. A lot of quick farmers have if their hit counts are more than five. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say more than five. Uh, most refund issues would be resolved. And if they're lower than five, good fucking luck. They're not supposed to be farming. Carmilla. Second skill, 40% attack buff and star gen, 50%. Reigns has this level of attack buff, and she also has charge, but she doesn't have any, like, looping support. She's, like, there to provide raw charge, not provide, um, like, ease of use. And then most recent buff, 3k heal, 20% defense, and sky attribute power mod. And this is just someone, something you can give any farmer for free, and they will get uh, super effective damage against these units. Anti assassin. I don't. Again, I haven't played Triple C, so I don't know if this is. Um, Supposed to be Lee Shuen or a different assassin. Like uh, Lee Shuen from Extra, not from FGO, because old man Lee Shuen or assassin Lee Shuen didn't show up until uh, Lost Belts. And your bride was in the game the same time Lancer Lee Shuen was released. Who has the same appearance as assassin, by the way, from Extra? They have the same appearance, but he's a different class in this game. 
Uh, MP will we'll also get mana loading because then you can use her in multi-core, by the way. Um, yeah, one of the first sabers to get an MP buff, and it shows over time because uh, a lot of better MP buffs have happened. Or a lot of a lot more uh, better single target sabers have come out. Damage to one enemy, no normal effect. One thousand burn for five turns. So if you are doing some honey lake stuff with your DPS and you just want to like put this on, like you can. It's just not the best way to do it. Defense down for by twenty percent for five turns. That is like really nice. And if you can get this ramp up. I'm not saying to do it. I'm just saying if it happens, I mean, hey, this is like, this is enough to like buy you turns until your buffs come off cooldown. So yeah, there is no other saber that gives you like support like this. There are some other supportive sabers, but like this is the one that can like influence a lot of stuff and just like challenge quests and like help you like pass uh dps thresholds and just looping thresholds as well like it's the, it keeps you moving fast instead of like having to slow down and again if you're fighting lancers like she's not gonna go down as quickly as like scotty like regular scotty not ruler Next up, Shiki. This servant got a glow up. This servant definitely got a glow up. Uh, they buffed her MP two ways. Oh, no, no, no. So they fixed her overkill so she couldn't insta kill and actually get refund. That was like what people cared about more than anything else. Like this made it so, like, this made the difference of getting. Uh, 20 charge and like fifth uh refunding 50 by not insta killing like immediately if they did that to a reese i would bump her up in the tier list but they still haven't done that for a reese so fuck that uh but yeah shiki can do black rail looping now Uh, it's only here, Super Scope, but I know for a fact she can, can do Black Rail Looping. Uh, but what would you expect from God? Like, actual, actual God of this universe. Uh, low base attack, super high HP. She can kind of can just solo and just be chilling along with farming. Uh, it counts better than an Artoria. Better than Artoria and the same gain too. Uh, you're just gonna have to rely on the quick card for refund. But extra attack should it's not average, but it's still gonna get you more than what it was on Artoria, that's for sure. Uh this costume counts for animal trait and for costume owning, so she can play into other niches as well. It's why you want. It's what, like having costumes gives you Miss Crane and having animal trait gives you uh, Vich Darkness. And like sometimes you do like there are servants that really do want to that like the overcharge buff but get screwed by Vich's uh, humanoid uh, hatred. This was the other thing that really helped Shiki actually loop. Because before, this was one turn arts, and that just wasn't going to be enough. You needed to brute force way more charge. Uh, so this one, however, does not play nicely, except in a challenge quest where trash mobs are literally getting thrown out. Because, uh, cool, you insta-kill, but... I'm not going to say it can't happen in a boss fight. I have done challenge quests where I actually do insta-kill. Um, I insta-kill the like main servant, and I always fucking die laughing seeing death uh, proc when, I do some, when I'm using summary Kiara. That shit has me roll, 
not rolling on the floor, but I'm always laughing because it's always it's the it's the rainbow unicorn. You don't see it that often. Uh, yeah, but getting going from this to them literally tripling the value and making this 100 percent. Good way to fix the unit. 25% attack and mental debuff resistance of 36%. This could get buffed. They'd make it 30, probably make this 100, and probably throw another effect. Cheeky's way. Um, yeah, because like mental, like this low mental debuff resistance, with like we see 100% on like worse skills. Yeah, like, uh, hang on. We have the comparison right here. Battery, arts buff, 100% and a heal. Attack and lower number. Like this definitely, 100%, I could see this being buffed. They're on the same cooldown as well. It just probably isn't going to be for a while because this was such a big buff for Shiki. Like this and the MP change. And this is already here. 30% battery. Uh, for herself and then she heal so she always gets this battery she targets the unit for the heal and then they get the drain so if you are like trying to do like farming do not target shiki do not target shiki with this like you choose someone else you that is already at zero and they could use the heal if you want to do farming do not pop this on her Cool, it's on a four turn, but you're gonna you're gonna screw up your loop, especially if you only have MP one. Because if you have to rely on the over on the insta kill to actually kill, your refund is gonna be lower. You're not gonna hit the break point you need. She gets carb omni carb buff because she's god. She has the beast uh trait, but that's because she's god. It's not because she's a beast. Anti foreigner again. She's god. It makes sense that she would be trying to that she would have an advantage for things that don't belong in this universe, and that mana loading. But mana loading comes first. Wombo combo, uh, defense pierce, and in invul pierce, complete party cleanse, and 10% uh, battery for the party, along with insta kill on uh, OC. Not something you really like build for, especially if you're trying to farm. Like, this is a fucking nightmare to try to, like, A, it screws with your refund, and B, like, insta kill is a meme. Unless it's like the enemy is doing it, then it's fucking scary. Uh, yeah, I want to. I want to read uh, Kara no Kyo or watch, watch Kara no Kyokai. I I'm gonna try to do all this shit this year. Uh, Fate Stay Night, uh, Witch, and Sukihime. I'm gonna try and read and experience all, and uh, Garden of Sinners. Uh, just read all this shit this year. I'm gonna have the time. Uh, all right, so uh, cheeky. Another A, but like she wouldn't go in A plus just because she is hard to use. Like if you're starting from super scope, not a big deal. But if you're starting from black rail, she gets, you have zero forgiveness. It's you kill or you don't. And isn't that it's fitting for this character that can just cut you with a sword and kill you. Doesn't even have to be a lethal cut. She just cuts you with a sword and you're dead. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This has all been five stars. Now we're going back to the four stars.
Oh, is this not a tragic case? Hold up, I need water. Hold up, hold up. Be right back. I filled this cup to the brim with water and I just left it on the counter. And now it's not nearly as cold. Unfortunate. Uh, yeah, Rama, this character, tragic. Fucking tragic. This is the worst case of, I don't know, is this cuckoldry or NTR? His wife shows up in an event and he doesn't show up. And then he shows up in the Valentine's Day event. That's fucked up. That is fucked up. This man keeps getting L after L, especially his introdu introduction. He came in as Nightingale's fucking backpack. He was like the the little bait, like the baby carrier that new moms have, and they just have the baby strapped so they can do other stuff. That was him the entire entirety of Singularity Five. They treat his he, they treat his gameplay the same way they treat his character in game, like actual dog shit. There is no conceivable reason you would be bringing Rama, even if it's in his niche. You would pick a different unit. Even when that unit isn't even using a niche, they'd still be performing better than Rama. What's up, Goomba? It's here this time. Nine point eight attack is good. This isn't what holds him back. It's like his kit being shit. Low, uh, low ish HP. Like this is close to berserker levels, if not actual berserker levels. MB charge is the normal saber numbers. They all have the same fucking hit counts. And then, uh, can he loop it all? I don't think he can. He needs face cards to do it. That's that's sign number one. First skill. Yeah, cool. 100% crit damage, 500 star weight on a four turn. This is a good skill. Um, except this is... You're saying he's supposed to be a crit servant? For raids? Are you sure about that? That's what this says. This is supposed to be raid. Get charisma. Why is it a charisma? Oh, yeah, she's a king. He is going to have charisma. Um, but, yeah, it's not even a good charisma. The same as Artoria. Guts, one time, three turns on a seven-turn cooldown. And it's the cuck. It's the NTR skill. He is never going to be with Sita. And now he has to suffer for it. The only time they're going to buff this skill is when Sita comes in, into mobile, which is never going to happen. They have deliberately said this shit's not going to happen. Good magic exists. You only have one quick card, sir, and a shit quick card. And then you have divinity that gets uh, railed even harder. Anti-rider. You don't even have a battery, so good fucking luck. You'd be better off with this, and maybe, maybe, maybe you might actually see some decent refund. MP effect is actually pretty cool. Damage to one enemy. Buster res down. But it's before damage. Oh, you can't catch a fucking break. Reduces gauge for a demonic enemy by one. And then extra damage against demonic enemies. Um, here's the thing. This is who you have advantage against. Half of these servants have fucking divinity too. So they're, you're not even going to choose them for bring Rama for anti-demonic. Uh, anti you're going to go with a better niche with better characters. And hold up. Oni, 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 and I believe these are Onis. So half of your niche is also Onis, and there's someone that is also anti-demonic and anti-Oni. 
Why, like, you got power crept by someone else in a different niche that just is always going to overlap your own. Unfortunate. Fucking tragic. You need, like, one or two more buffs to be usable. There is no niche. You're not... You're not suffering from, like, the worst hit counts. Your kit makes sense. It's just bad. It is just bad. All right. Ran over. Uh, missions. You, that looks like my free-to-play account. Having that much shit. His Rama's role in this story is to get shit on. And that's not that's not even a joke. His role in this story is just to get shit on. It's like Sakura and Fate Stay Night. He exists to suffer. He unfortunately exists solely to suffer. Who you roll in? Uh, Summer is gonna be a gauntlet again. I'm going for all of them in Ibuki, probably MP2 again. Like the difference this year is I don't have to summon for Doman. Uh, and I'm also dodging Charlemagne because I, I'm not going to get a better Charlemagne than what I have on it, JP. It's not fucking going to happen. And with me uh, having Okitan on main account, there's n there's no reason for me to go to MP3 uh, to go for Charlemagne. As much as I like the guy, like it, it's just not going to happen. Ah, uh, speaking of cuckoldry, speaking of cuckoldry, the most infamous cuck knight that apparently only gets off for married women. He is every degenerate's role model, and every time Mash it kicks the shit out of him, it is justified. Basically, 10k attack. Uh, lower HP, but this guy kind of just, he just goes. He just, he kind of just goes. His refund gets, like, really dumb considering, like, how low his hit counts are and his MP being one hit. He still refunds, like, fairly well. Like, also, we got good hit counts now. Modern hit looking hit counts. It only took 121 servants for them to actually know how to make a character. Who would have thought? And him having this uh, costume does not help his case. If anything, it should make Mash even like more. This guy is a piece of shit. He's trying to riz up uh, Gudiko. So Mash has to be guard dog, ready to beat the shit out of him. Oh, wait, no. Ma oh, wait. Right, Gudako's not married yet to Mash. Yet. Yet. Or any other of the female servants. Yet. So she's safe for now. All right, first skill. 30% battery. Regardless of how much you level, you level this skill for the cooldown and the star bomb. Second skill, 6,000% star weight in a time before anyone, any other servants was doing it like this. Like, this is what he was famous for in uh, Fate Zero as a Berserker, and now as a Saber, it's overkill. It is so fucking beyond overkill. Like, he pops this skill, and he is not, he should be getting every single star on the field. Like, without question. And third skill, stars per turn, and 50% crit damage for three turns. Knight does not die with empty hands, indeed. Just watch Fate Zero, and this whole kit makes sense. Debuff res, quick performance. Anti-saber, again, makes sense. Like, guy is a knight, and he's constantly, like, imp uh, he is known as the strongest knight, the most gifted knight. The fanfic character. My my guy has infinity plus two damage type of saber. And MP, 30% arts uh, for one turn. It's why his refund actually gets like really stupid. 
because uh, he just spams the MP, takes hits, and then refunds and just keeps doing that. And then his buff gave him defense pierce, which for such a spammable MP is what you wanted. This is the worst part of his kit. Uh, increased damage taken. Like the only time this will ever matter is if some character, if some enemy has like actual damage resistance that's like up in the nineties. Like I think one of the Tesla Cup quests uh, fights is gonna be. That's the only time a, a debuff like this is gonna be useful when you like you literally cannot. The only way to do damage is like either dot them to death or completely mitigate it with uh damage plus and damage taken i would not put him in a plus up to ex simply because like his skills have not been touched his his skill set is good it didn't need the buffs it's just he does like if he wants to go higher, he needs buffs. Five lures and four and high foe cards sword for summer. Uh, uh, I mean, okay, so Goomba, you do not need to like store up foes or not not uh foes lures. You do not need to store up uh lures because you will get a sh such fucking. Okay, first, how many characters do you have, and how many of them are max ascended? Because we're going to get like upwards of 30 to 40 uh, crystallized lures for our seventh anniversary, along with 700 plus Saint Quartz, depending on how many characters you have. And we're going to get it all at once. All right. Uh, 10 down or 12 down, 28 to go. Yeah, you're... Don't I would not worry about uh hoarding lures if you're go if it's for summer servants, you're gonna have enough. Just don't be a dumbass and use them the second you get the lures because there is a month before summer. All right. That's it for Cuck Night. Now it's time to uh sort of praise the sun. Like, I will take Gawain getting this costume, but, like, he's also very vocal about what his type of women is and that he has more lo loyalty to uh, Lancer Artoria in this game than he does Saber. I wonder fucking why. I, wo I wonder why. Also, like... What the fuck? I actually want to know what the fuck goes through Lancelot's head because technically Lancer Artoria is still a married woman. The same, like both of these would Okay, for him, not really because that is his cousin. He he appreciates the big boobs, but I highly doubt he'd be lancing after lusting after his cousin. K Kona. Oof. But genuinely, genuinely, respectfully, what the fuck goes through Lancelot's head every time he sees Lancer Artoria? That, like, that honestly has to be the most fucked up mindset because of everything that went went down. All right, I, I, I need to do throw in these jokes, otherwise this is going to be miserable. Base attack, good. HP, it's low. Like really, really low. Uh Berserker levels low. I mean he is a gorilla, so it makes sense. Deck shows. Uh, but high gains, like a deck like this isn't bad these days. Uh, especially because Buster cards can refund. But it's still usually they bump up the hit counts for these cards. Specifically for quit, but a two hit arts card at one point one four isn't isn't bad. It's it's a lot better than like Artorias, but she has two of them. 
First skill, 20% attack static for three turns. And then if you're on the sunlight, 30% buster for three turns. This skill buff lets him bring the sun, but only for one turn. Uh, this is an issue with uh, his MP for how they buffed it. Uh, this only lasting for one turn like means that if you are fighting with Gwen, you need to already be fighting in the sun to like consistently have the effects up. But that doesn't happen. They did change this from a dog shit e charisma, so uh, did the the gap for how good a charisma can be is staggering. Because this is this is not only fixing the attack; this is also basically guaranteeing a buster buff. And third skill: this is he can do farming, but holy shit! Like I. I <sighs> I don't have that much of a problem with this 20 battery. It sucks for farming, but it's not the biggest deal. If he could be um, double stacking for Vich farming, cool. I mean, he kind of can already do that with Chloe, but a different story. This, this, this guts. It is dog shit. Holy fucking shit. I hate guts like this. One time, one turn. I hate this on Romulus. I fucking hate this on him. It, like this part of the skill is why I want it buff more than the battery. Even I like I don't care if he stuck double over on farming. Fucking fix this. Anti rider. Um, who is rider and extra? Not Drake. I don't I actually don't know this one. I don't know. Sometimes they just throw this shit. They just throw Ryder against Sabres for no fucking reason. Okay, yeah, this uh this went from basic bitch to a word document. Uh so keeps the skill seal. Nice. Crit damage of Buster cards on sunlight for three turns. Very, very nice that she, he has ramp up like this for a gorilla deck. And star weight of Buster cards by 300% on sunlight battlefield for three turns. Okay, so. This shit makes it a pain because if you're actually able to loop with Wayne and it is not sunlight, you it the MP didn't change from what it was before. You like you would have to bring someone that could keep the sun. So Ozzy Mandius, uh Shangju. I don't think there are command codes that secure Sunlight Battlefield. And also burn for Honey Lake, but like this. This is cool, but it's inconvenient. Like it like what's the point what's the point of this skill buff only being one turn if this would want you to be three turns? Uh Point Shaku. Yeah, like she's she's adorable. Even like even though she's stalkerish, like it's not Kiyohime stalkerish. It's just like she is lonely. She is lonely and wants affection. She's not you are my husband. Now fuck me right now. Otherwise, I'm going to burn you for not doing what I want. At least I don't think uh, Queen Shaku is like that. I might be wrong, but like she gets enough screen time that it's like she can't be the new Kiyohime. I haven't heard things like she's the new Kiyohime. Indeed, pet pet. Uh, yeah, so Gwen. Wait, where are you? Okay, you're here. Uh, B, because Nero's here and she had the same, uh, battlefield conditions. Like, he is just more consistent on sunlight. 
And like, it's not like sunlight is the worst thing, but he can't fight indoors. Uh, Grand Carnival proved that. Doesn't matter if it's sunny outside, if you can't see the sun, he, he's not invincible and gets beaten by Dion in a fencing contest. Unfortunate. Oh, we get to talk about Musashi. We get to talk about Musashi. Single target, single target, single target, single target, single target, single target. Yep, nope, EX. I get to put her right in EX. Because she does not have competition. She has no en she has no enemies. She alone is the honored one. And uh, there are also in investigations for her, but that's a different story. Uh, different time period, blah, blah, blah. Trying to justify Musashi, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, she's, she's going to have problems beating the allegations. Uh, all right. Base attack, high. HP, it's okay. 0.87. Thank God this, hit this uh, charge is good. And all these hit counts, well, nowadays you can just double them. So six hit quick, six hit arts at 0.87. And yeah, so when Musashi has her skill buff, she has like the best arts card in the entire game. Right? Yeah, because that's like 4.8 gain per hit. Like you, like if you have. Yeah, like if you get if this is at the end of the chain, you pretty much guarantee you have your MP back. And if it's a mighty chain, forget about it. First skill was originally one turn. Now now the hit count is double for three turns. 30% damage also for three turns. So what this but you cannot double stack this buff. I'm pretty sure you can double stack the damage taken with Vich, but you cannot double stack this and get like crazy hit counts. No, no, you have to, you pretty much have to wait for this buff to come off cooldown and to do it again. Otherwise, there's no point. Uh, yeah, from. What I remember, if you don't, if you double stack the skill, it doesn't do anything. You just have it for five turns instead of the possible six. Second skill, invincibility, fifty percent Buster buff, and invul, thirty percent Sergeant and debuff cleanse. Yes, sir. I got both Kiara and Hokusai. One an Avenger, but they're both good. This is my first deal. Nice, 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 nice. Wait, Summer Kiara or Alter Ego? I'm assuming Summer. Oh, OG. Shit, I don't even remember what banner that would be. Anti-Berserker. Fucking awesome. She did not need this. They could have gave, given her like a jank one, but they gave her one that actually makes her good. Like, even better. Uh, does not have battery. You should... I like I can't say don't preference the battery, but like this on her in particular, it turns into an eight hit extra attack. Eight fucking hits, and then you're still boosting this up. Um, if you don't have full refund, like a full hundred percent ready MP again, and also don't have like full 50 stars, um, yeah, the, the, there something's wrong because you should have a lot of shit. But uh, they're probably gonna give her a battery eventually, and it's probably gonna be on this skill. Let's just fucking be honest. Uh, this one or this one, more actually more likely this one. Yeah, because tying the battery to this not a good idea, but tying it to this is okay because it already has a three turn effect. And they tend to put batteries on three turn effects, uh, unless it's a dodge. But that you, they usually also have three turn. 
moves their buffs after damage. Super effective damage against uh, Alter Ego or Moon Cancers. Alter Egos are going to hit her for less. And Moon Cancers, you need to have a ruler. Uh, and not everyone has, like, cracked Luvias. Uh, and she still kind of hits harder. MP damage 30 base and goes all the fucking way up to 90% MP damage on overcharge. This is probably the wonkiest fucking scaling for OC that I've seen in the game. Like, this is tripling the buff of, uh, of, uh, overcharge one. But you're probably not, like, unless it's MP chain, you're probably not hitting this 90. Probably not hitting this 90 unless you are, like, actually trying to one-shot the shit out of someone. Uh, and even then, that's not gonna work. No, she needs some kind of charge. Like, you'd have to, like, fully set up for it. But, yeah, this happens after damage. I would say unfortunate, but, like, yeah. These buster crits are gonna hit a whole lot harder than an MP is. Let's, let's just be real. Those buster cr crits are what you care about more on a buster servant than the MP. Even if she has the hardest hitting uh, MP for single target saber, it's it, buster crits with Vich are fucking nukes. Yeah. She's EX because she has no competition. Who are you going to compare to? Sigurd? You're going to compare her to Sigurd? Yeah, good luck with that shit. Hey, if we're talking anti-dragon, hold up, where's, where's Sumanai? Oh, wait, this is, uh, yeah, insult to injury. Insult to injury, where's Sumanai? Considering you're more likely to have an MP2 Sumanai than you are Sigurd. Rip Bozo. Rip Bozo. Oh, shit. All right, now. Uh, and now I fuck around and got embarrassed. All right, back to it. Arthur. Let me see. We'll see. It'll spook you eventually. Oof. I'm sorry you have MP2, Sigurd. Cool character, just shit gameplay. Really shit gameplay. All right, Arthur. This guy does not get the spotlight he really should. Uh, especially with Lady Avalon coming out, you'd think he'd show up more in the story, but no. No. He has needed a buff, but it is unclear what buff he actually needs. Uh, so same shit as Artoria, just modern, extra attacks better. Uh, higher base attack, lower HP, more offensive, but I mean, Saber, Artoria just is more universally used. He's more closer in comparison to Mordred than even Artoria. Uh, these days. First skill, 50% Buster and 30% MP Gin for three fucking turns. The second they make him able to farm, this guy is going to be a fucking monster. He is going to be so fucking monstrous. And, like, all they... If they want to go this route, like, all they have to do is, like, put 10% here. And then he could black, and then he uh, starts from 60 like Salter would have before. But that, again, that doesn't fix the problem. It's a slight fix, not the fix that people would want for him. For how long he's been shafted, like people want him to pop the fuck off. Like this being. Uh, Three turns and 30 is more deserving of Arthur. But yeah. This 30 stars, 50 crit damage. Again, double stack it, much like Mordred. 
And yeah, if they could make this three turns awesome and then make this 30. This does not, this 20 battery does not scale with leveling. It is static 20, but super effective go or damage mod goes up to 100%. Unfortunately, um, this is only boss enemies, so you need to be fighting a Lancer or a Berserker to, like, even get this niche. It is, I mean, I guess you can bring him to fight Tiamat or King Protea, but you wouldn't, you definitely weren't bring him to fight Beast 4. <laughs> like, rip, again, rip Bozo, like person on this list and you would have been doing less damage than someone than Melson. I mean that's a given, but still. Anti Saber again. Uh and there was no saber with super large. It was BB. Yeah. Unfortunate. MP, no normal effect and MP damage of 10%. This is pathetic. This is actually fucking pathetic. Like they have, they've had to buff everything about this unit, just like Saber uh, uh, Artoria, but they are not going anywhere near fast enough. Like she got all her stuff buffed by year five, and kind of like she still needs a buff, but m the brute force of it to be functional it was over the course of like really two years and like the last buff like really made her just pop off not dog shit he has like really good potential but I can't you know, same category as Gwen. solid just not meta at all we're going to fight the KP uh, Seraph KP fight uh summer jolter for that fight i am waiting like because i do have that uh fight on like ready to go i am waiting for summer Wu zetian and uh summer scotty and i'm going to have my mp three three she show one shot it like black rail uh undead niche uh full ramp up of that shit I'm I'm just gonna try and one shot King Protea, and I will spend a stream figuring how to do that. But I got I gotta wait for Summer Wu. Um, yeah, that honestly is gonna be the hardest part, like waiting for Summer Wu. But I I've been waiting two years for that, and I at this point I don't care. It it it's going to happen. I could try it on uh, JP now because I do have the full setup, but that's MP1 she show. I like my she show is on NA is just cracked. Uh, all right, next up, Shizuka Gozen. Shizuka Gozen. This servant has spooked me so many goddamn times. Like, literally, this is 120 possibility because of how many times I've gotten spooked. That honestly has more to do with the banners that I've summoned on than it does her as a character. But the fact that I've gotten enough copies to even consider 120 after I've gotten all her pens speaks volumes for what banners I summoned for. I haven't even played. They're like triple C, and yet all the characters that come out of triple C are fucking some of my favorites. Like Tom Mo is like literally my favorite wife character, and I still like I haven't played uh normal extra or extra record or not extra record uh triple C. I just see the clips and like oh my god, oh my fucking god. She just transcends the games. And even became a VTuber for one of the uh, anniversaries. Good base attack. It's average HP low. MB charge 0.57. You are pretty much guaranteed to be. Uh... Go. 
yeah, this extra remake comes out. I'm playing it on stream. Uh, I haven't played Triple C because I kind of am waiting for that. Um, yeah, with the way your kit works, this uh, charge, you're guaranteed to be critting on these. If you're not critting on this, you are actually doing something wrong. Like, her skills are not leveled. Because she is a fucking star jenner as a buster servant. 40% buster, three times, three turns. 50% star gen. And 30% uh, or 50% crit damage, three times, three turns. This is hard. Like, really hard not to use up. Like, the first turn you pop the MP and you do a mighty chain, you can kind of avoid, like, the crits. Like, don't put, like, pop certain buffs that give you stars. And you got to save these for when you have buster crits. But even then, if you want to keep the damage on the MP, cool. But depending on your setup, you're probably not con that concerned about this. But, yeah, this is, if you're farming, it's easier. It's less you have to worry about. Challenge quest, you got to be really careful. You don't use these up too quickly. 100% charm for males and reduce their attack for one turn. Definitely feel this could be buffed uh, and make this three turns. I, I don't think they're going to do anything else. 10% battery every turn for five turns. This is why she cannot do double Vich farming and is stuck to double Oberon. MP damage 20% static for three turns. Again, this could be buffed too. This is like... um. Amakusa. Amakusa had a skill like this. Uh, which one is it? Yeah. No, Amakusa had an even better version of it. He got 20%. Uh, but because this is lower cooldown. And it's giving damage and invo uh, evasion pierce. Like, bra like if they don't buff this and make it 20, I kind of get it. Um, yeah, she's like 10. Like, if this even, even if this gets buffed up to 15, that actually will be the difference. No, 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 it won't. It won't because this is on a six turn. If they, yeah, if they don't want to give her an actual battery, they would have to. Yeah, no, she's just stuck to super scope, uh, double Oberon if you want to farm. She's better in challenge quests. Debuff res, quick, divinity, blah, blah, blah. Anti ruler, worst fucking thing. You do not level this. You do like if you level this, it's because you literally have nothing else to do. It, like if you plan on like lowering this, just stop. You shouldn't be bringing her to fight rulers. If rulers are in your node, then you probably should like unless it's unless the ruler has like no HP, you shouldn't have brought her. Again, why she is better in challenge quest? She has star gen. Uh, MP gen and a 10 hit buster AOE MP with crit ramp up. She is supposed to be spamming the shit out of her MP and the more she spams it, the easier it is to keep the uptime on all this stuff. Any cooldown reduction helps keep this uptime nice and high, but she kind of can be slightly self-sufficient, but I, there's only so much you can do. She, like, she kind of does need the star gen up at a, almost all times. Like, it would have been nice if the star gen was here as well instead of being tied to this skill. But is what it is. She always had it, and this was, like, super weak to begin with. I, I think she's on the same level. She doesn't doing. She's like super. She's consistent, but she's not. She like she doesn't have anything to like really really pop off. Like she's just uh consistent, and like how good she is. 
like a buff probably isn't going to change it that much unless it's actually a like really good buff. Uh, wait, one thing. I, again, I, I know they're like going crazy with giving people batteries, but like it's either this skill or this one. And I would bank bet money on this one. If they give her a 30 battery on it. I uh, like, I would probably bet money on it. And then she like, now she's an actual farmer and like putting up good numbers. Uh, both Vlad's grailed. Uh, I need my Vlad's skills to be like 10, 10, 10 before I think about grailing him. Uh, and also because I'm not going for Charlemagne, I'm not going for uh, Kremhild. So also more likely to go for Summer Castoria like MP2 on main. And I'm still tr kind of traumatized because... First one was pity, and then the other one was I got two trying to summer summon for summer Chloe. So there is some actual trauma with that. Uh, uh which one is history again? Which one is history? Because I just deleted this again. This is uh, whatever. All right, next, Frankenstein Saber. Here's some where Chloe's good for farming. She, like, she has her own farming setup. Like, it's, it's different than the normal shit. Maybe too young. Yeah. All right. Brand 9.3K. Uh, I get it, but I would keep her in this. The, she looks too young. She, she looks too young for me to be wearing this shit. Like she looks like a teenager and a little too close in age. To like how some of my students like actually look, like body type wise, and I think height. Does it actually say it? One seventy two. Wait, she's my height. She's almost my height. No, what? It's it's how she acts. She doesn't talk. It's a cutesy voice, and then Mor Moriarty treats her like a daughter. But I think I misinterpreted as like like preteen and not actual like teenage daughter. No, what? Yeah, mm, yeah. This I I like this like. Leave the fetish swimsuit for someone for like one of the older servants. Doesn't even have to be like Raiko, just like one of the older servants. Like again, get it. I understand why. It's just I I would feel less weird about it. Because like I'm not joking. Some of these kids, like fifth graders, like eleven year olds, are looking like thirteen or fourteen year olds. It's it's something in the water. Decent attack, low HP, MP charge, very healthy for a quick unit. Like she actually needs this level, especially because she's single target. But it actually just gets better. Like I do not have bad things about uh, to say about this unit. Uh, like upstairs, and aside from the good hit counts, she also has double buster, double quick. Which means like she works with both Scotties, uh, specifically Ruler. Her skills do have demerits though. You need ten percent battery to pop this skill. 
you get 80% MP gain for 10% battery. If you have mana loading, this isn't even like a cost. Like it, this is nothing. Like you just need mana loading and then you can pop this in turn one. Which like pretty much means like with like you would use her in a black rail setup and then just like she has mana loading, mana loading even just recently a lock eats it and then you just pop two Scotties and then you just rely on her own refund to actually get back, which truly is not going to be that hard when her gain is this fucking high. 80 gain with base 0.7 and then like decent quick cards. Roid it out by Scotty and a really good arts card. It's not one of the best ones in the game, but it's really not that far off. Like with this skill up, she refunds more than bitches. Uh, yeah, more than bitches. Second skill, 500 damage. Again, this is nothing. 500 damage is absolutely nothing at this point of time. You take more damage from to the entire party from popping a bitch battery than this. If anyone uses this as a fault against Summer Friend, like, they do not know how to play this game. You should not be, like, if you're nervous about 500 HP, fucking grail them. Grail them if you care that much about it. Uh, this, this should have a buff removal icon because you care more about the buff removal than this attack buff, uh, debuff. Yeah, like this 20%, almost nothing compared to them not having any buffs. And it's not even defensive or offensive. It is all their buffs, including like guts. 20% attack, 20% MP damage, and a burn that's unstackable for 200 damage for five, uh, five turns to self. If you are fighting a boss that actually... Um, If you're fighting like a young Guifei, I believe this stops you from taking um, burn damage, like heavy, heavy burn damage ramp up. Uh, you aren't immune to the amp if they put it on you, but this, I think, because it's unstackable and you put this on first, it makes it so you can't get other burn stacks. I need, like, I would need to test it, but that is so fucking hard to actually test. Yeah, that that is actually, like, ridiculously hard to, like, try and test to see how it works. Uh, Because I don't even know if I had Summer Friend when the Yang Wifei challenge quest was out. But if this can stop you from taking a whole bunch of burn damage, is this really a demerit? Like, you wouldn't bring her to fight Yang Wifei. But completely ignoring like burn heavy fights because of a skill demerit, I don't know. It's it it's a niche thing. It's almost never gonna come up. But when if it does work the way I just said, whoa. Riding ex as a quick unit, awesome. Oh look at that anti fucking berserker, as if she didn't need any anything else. One of the best depends for a night class. Five hit single target. 20% chance to activate, uh, to stun all the enemies besides your target. And then you have a chance to uh, stun your target. For a kit that has not been buffed, this is super solid. I'm so fucking tempted. I'm so fucking tempted. I'm hesitating because she hasn't gotten any buffs and it's unlikely that she actually does get buffs. Well, like everyone else here, it's more likely. Like Okita. Who's more likely to get another buff? Okita or Saber Fran?
Like, on paper, everything looks so good. On paper, everything looks so good. This, this is going to be a feel. This is going to be, like, which one feels better. I like the three-turn effects of this more. Mm. Like, I don't think they're on the same level, though. Hold up. I, I like, I need to see the damage. Wait. Yeah, actually, I might actually swap Pokita. Because this is one turn. She gets one turn of this, and then she falls off. And that's her only offensive buff. Well, she... Yeah, no, that damn... That difference is not enough. That is not enough. All right, yeah, you you two are getting swapped because like you gotta remember that this is all what like all buffs are popped. If she's only hitting seven thousand more when Fran has zero, uh, one turn buffs, they're all three turns, and like she has Shikuchi ramp up, but if you don't kill, that's it. Like this is this is my preference toward return buffs like really showing. But yeah, like also she's double quick buster double quick. She works better with ruler no. Uh you're double buster double quick too. Uh it's like you'd use them for different things. You'd use them for different things, but this one would work. Uh okay, hold up. I had another sheet that I wasn't didn't even know if I was gonna bring up, but this one for this comparison I actually need it. Like, neither one of them is topping Saber Medusa. That, that's a fact. Neither one of them is going to top her. Uh, uh, and I can't sort. God damn it. Yeah, can't sort. Uh, Saber Fran. All right, so in the same setup. Uh, yeah, I got it. Much better. All right, uh, MP1. More damage. MP, but we didn't use that here. Yeah, so. Like, Shikuchi is tactical. MP1 to MP2, Okida just gets speed out, but this is supposed to be MP1 to MP1. First one I'm actually getting stuck on. First one I'm actually getting stuck on. And it's like, it's fucking showing. Oh, wait, no, he... She's using double Oberon?
She's getting, she's using double Oberon and she's getting this shit. I like, I don't know. I think that speaks even more volumes for her. Like this isn't relying on her face cards at all. Yeah. Like Okita gets double ruler Scotty and isn't out damaging her by that much. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna keep this here. I I really just hate the Shikuchi buff. I hate the way it, they implemented it and I like it fucks with this character's ranking. It really, really fucks with the ranking. <sighs> okay. I know that's going to piss people off, but that's kind of how I'm feeling about it. And just for context, where's the stall on here? Better I actually know where he is. Oh, he just, like, decimates competition. Yeah, no. That shows how much having a battery helps. Shows how much having a battery fucking helps him. All right. Next, Yagyu. And once we hit 20... I think this is 17. I'm, I need to take a break. I need to take a uh, mental break. Uh, do some FGO. I can't smoke yet. And that's what sucks. What is what it is. Yeah, we still got a ways to go. Okay. Goaded Swordsmaster. This guy is so cool as a character. Like, he is, like, he is, like, the opposite of the old man, like, instructor. He's like, oh, no, I learn from my students just as much as I teach them. And I get stronger because of my students' new viewpoints. Like, holy fuck. Like, that, as a teacher, I fucking love that. Like, I learn how to teach my students better from seeing how how they think and I just like can get behind this guy and also he bodied the shit out of Musashi the first time she saw him like completely bodied her so that is big feet guy is just a goat unfortunate gameplay he is a raid he is meant for raids he is not meant for farming there is just too much one turn shit in his kit for me to like Say he can do any any type of farming. It's mostly, from my understanding, is it's mostly like you bring him for a raid and he just one shots, similar to to uh, Lee Shuen. So healthy charge, hit counts could use work, but they're not egregious. They they're a little too similar to year one, but not so bad that he's not like functioning well yeah 50 percent arts for one turn star weight for one turn debuff resistance for one turn this, this really is a lee shuen thing i don't know why i hate lee, lee shuen as much as i do um when i actually like yagyu because i think they also have like the same hit counts uh, I i don't think they're that different uh They are the exact same. He has a better extra. They are the exact same. So I don't know why I value Yagyu more than I do Li Shuwen. Dodge one turn, 20% attack for one turn, crit damage for a turn, and they reduce cooldown. When this was, that was it. Yeah, I don't I don't know why like I don't like Li Shuen, but I don't mind Yagyu. 
I like, yeah, no, I, oh, no, it's because of this. Like, he actually has a chance to get it back to his MP. Yeah, okay, that, that was it. Because he can actually, like, somewhat MP spam. That, that makes way too much sense. 50% attack down with 50% MP gen for one turn. Yeah, Li Shuan just suffers so much from, like, one hit MP and then, like, two hit. If his arts cards do not crit, you're fucked. Anti saber again makes sense. Sabers want to fight sabers. Uh, Yori, uh, hey, you look pretty strong. We should uh, we should fight. That okay. So going back to Samurai Remnant, that is the coolest shit that you play through the second playthrough. I don't even know what triggered it, but you're seeing like different. You see the different like, you do the first playthrough. You're like, oh, these characters are. This is how you feel about these characters. Then you do the second playthrough, and you're like. Oh, oh, what you thought you like the first playthrough, you see it from Saber's point of view, like arguably, and then you I actually see what a Yori is thinking. And you don't even know it's because this is the second playthrough. Or it was always like this. Like you did, you didn't do something in first playthrough. Uh, anyway, back to this four hit single target reduces their attack. It's not going to be the best gains. Uh, going back to this. Like, not... He's not probably not going to be doing Black Rail stuff. Doesn't have a battery. He would have to be refunding so much. Uh, it, like, for this, it would be RNG dependent. He could probably run Black Rail. It's just... You can't do that in farming. Challenge quests, sure, not in farming. You need, like, you need to be able to refund, and it doesn't look like he has what he needs. So for him, B, he can kind of do it, but he's not. He's not going to be your first choice. Uh, he needs, like, another buff. Like, hit counts would help, but... Like, again, I don't want to say, oh, give him a battery, because that's what all... That's kind of all they're doing. Murasaki was an exception, but, like, give a battery is most common buff. All right, yeah, so we are going to watch stuff on YouTube while I eat uh, when I actually hit halfway point. Which, I mean, I probably already did hit, but it's whatever. No, I don't do story rolls either because I'm on... That, that pool, the story pool is so fucking bloated, it's not even funny. There needs to be a story one and a story two banner. You need to separate it at this point. Because it's like you're rolling on a banner with 20 servants on raid up at the same fucking time. You are never going to get what you're looking for in there. If you get lucky, cool. But you cannot roll story and expect to get anything. Oh. All right. This is 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right. I'll give uh, two more and then we take a break. And I eat my ramen. Oh, boy. Sigurd. Sigurd, Sigurd, Sigurd. You're your first C. You are first C. His benefit is that he is a buster unit and you can use Vich to like f give him what he already has. That is what Vich does. You have peaks and then Vich's own skills give him what he he misses out because he used up uh, buster crits too quickly. You can literally use up every single part of his kit in one turn. 
It is possible. And then he has no buffs. He is a, if you have Brennan your Caldea, hi Gabby. If you have Brennan your Caldea, you are happy to have him because he's taking the craziness of her away from you. You are not going to be, hi, Bryn, give her a hug, and then she stabs you in the chest. Uh, unlike him, you don't have guts. Wait, didn't they buff him to give him guts? No, he, no, he always had the guts. Yeah, and then Summer, like, it was some Friday the 13th shit while she has a giant fucking chainsaw. There is some things you do for love and others like, holy shit. Like, this man is something else to go for a woman that is literally trying to kill him that much. Good base attack. HP lower, but it's whatever. Hit counts, they're okay. MP charge, good. He's supposed to be critting on this, but good fucking luck. First skill, 100% crit damage, three attacks, three turns. I get it, but this, this fucked up his entire kit. This fucked up his entire kit. At this point, I'm saying give him 100% because he has suffered from this, and then they're going to have to buff the skill again. This, this buff was never a buff. It was a skill fix. A mana burst on a seven turn with a shitty guts. Mm -mm. You cram two skills into one. You should have put this shit and made this a five turn. Instead, you give it the three times shit. At least the guts has 50% uptime instead of the 42% that he had before. Hundred percent star gen and debuff immunity of one turn. This skill ain't bad. This is pretty good. I'm not gonna say he needs this three turns. It would help, but this is not gonna come anywhere close to fixing his issues. Nuke the ninety plus plus Liz. Um, I will say, like single, like. Instant kill dragons, yeah, he would have it better than uh Sumanai only because Sumanai does need like at least two turns to ramp up, but like that is the only benefit he has. His benefit is that he's like burst very high burst damage and then falls off so fucking hard. If Fitch wasn't in the game, he would be in don't use for me. 100%. I would never use him if Vich wasn't in the game. Again, anti Saber. But in his defense, once again, there are a shitload of Dragon Sabers. In his defense, there are a shitload of Dragon Sabers. There's a shitload of Dragon Lancers. It's not like you can't use him. And also a bunch of dragon berserkers. It's not that you can't use them. It's just like. Even in niche. He's not hitting that much harder. He's not hitting that much harder. Like. If it's not a raid where you're one shotting. Like even Musashi is going to pull up and do more damage. And this is a buffed MP too. Damage for one enemies, reduce their gauge, doesn't matter if they're dragon or not. This was added effect, super effective dragon. Like, if he's not fighting dragons, you shouldn't bring him. If he is fighting dragons, you ha if it's not a three turn, I mean, if it's a three turn like fight, you bring Sumanai. You burst down too quickly. He he needs at least one or two more buffs. He needs one or two more buffs, and that is sad. For him to come out at the same time as Scotty. He comes out the same time as Scotty and is looking like a year one servant in terms of skills. 
That is so fucked. No, that's just my opinion. All right. Maybe, and let me take a lunch break. Wait, did I? Hold on. I got to count to see if I actually did the markers right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, fuck. I fucked up. I, for, I forgot at least one of these markers. Oh, well. It is what it is. I don't even know if uh, marking them in the, sh the VOD is even going to do anything. All right. Queen, uh, Queen thought she honestly is a lot better. At, like, as I've actually read, like, the writing for her that isn't from Singularity 5, I don't hate her nearly as much because she is actually, like, in her own way, trying to make Scotty not... Like, she's, like, genuinely try trying to be nice in her own way to Scotty. Who, like, who has, like, I don't want to say it's dysphoria, but she, like, she doesn't feel comfortable being around all these servants that OG's, uh, she show is around. Like, she does not com feel comfortable because of the trauma from the Lost Belt. And Mabe, in her own way, does try to help. And then you have, uh... Knock Maria doing the same shit for uh, Castoria in Lost Belt 6. And it's like, it gets harder and harder to hate this servant. I don't like her as a person or even as a character, but she's not, she's not the same. She's not written the same way she was in Singularity 5. It, like, it's, it's showing how much better the character writing has gone. Uh, base attack super super low. Like this is damn close to Artoria Lily. Like this is not good. Uh, but I'm pretty sure she's supposed to be like sub DPS, not main DPS. So is what it is. Uh, if this bothers you that much, rail her. But even to level ninety is not gonna push you into nine k. Yeah, that's, that's not a good sign of how low her base attack is. Sargon, MP charge. Okay. This is, again, low. All things considered, like most sabers are like 0.8 with two hits. This being lower is... Yeah. First skill, 20 battery every turn and 10 stars every turn. I believe Silver Murasaki has this skill and it might honestly be... No. Same type of skill, different... Uh, I think slightly different effect. Yeah, I think Summer Masaki has this at 20. Second skill, 60% chance to charm. This does not change when you level it up. And then 20% arts res down. Now it makes sense why her uh, attack is lower. Makes sense why her refund is lower. It is, you're supposed to have this. 20% uh, attack to the party. Everyone else gets crit damage except for her. She is sub DPS. Don't use her like a main DPS. Uh, she is definitely more, I would say, esports, but not really. It's like she gets hit, she pops her MP, and then you kind of do want her to die. But you can't put a K scope in a taunt at the same time. So unfortunate. Anti-Berserker, cool, but again, not main DPS. And six hit uh, single target arts. Nice shot for three turns and reduces their defense, but you need overcharge to secure this. It rolls it four times. Uh, so if you have overcharge 500, you are guaranteed to land the four uh forty percent defense down, but at sixty percent you can get anywhere from zero to four of these to hit. Uh, buff success chance up should buff this up, but that is adding so many tertiary supports to your run. It's not worth it. It's if it happens, it happens, but this is not something I would rely on. 
Like, not only that, like, she doesn't have the Mabe, like, the classic Mabe stuff where she's, like, buffing the shit out of males. And that's a summer thing, too. Like, it's weird that a unit that's base buffs the shit out of males and a summer unit that the early ones all buffed males, too, doesn't have any male buffs. Right? And not even on the Bonsi, either. She's queen, indeed. Yeah, I tried to get Sigurd just because he's cool, but I have him on uh, alt now, so I, I don't need to worry about it. Chat, if you don't understand French... I'm just gonna I'm gonna stop here and explain this. Water of the toilet, white honey. Oh my fucking god. I need to take a second for that. Let, let's make sure I'm not translating this right wrong. Let's make sure I'm not translating this wrong. What that? <laughs> How is this translating? This means water. I know this. I know for a fact. This means water. The fact that I have to fucking stop the tier list for fucking French water. Yeah, water of the toilet. They just did weird grammar shit like they always do. But to be fair, they're Japanese and then they translate this into English. But yeah, water of the toilet, white honey. What the fuck do you think this is? means if you're talking about Mabe. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay. All right. Back from the break. Time to keep going through the tier list. At least all like at least it can only get better from here, right? 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 No. No. It can it, it can still get worse. Another cuck knight. Um, but this one is like he might have chronologically been the first cuck knight, but he is not the best cuck knight. Lancelot is because he almost single handedly caused the downfall of an entire nation. This guy just pissed off his king to the point he got gored by a boar. As like almost all Irish heroes die, they always die from fucking demon boars. The size of a fucking house. <clears throat> All right. I wonder if Shisho actually has something to do with that. I wouldn't be surprised. Just threw him out from the land of shadows just for shits and giggles. All right. Base attack is pretty high. 10,000. Yes, this list is just sabers and non welfares or low cost. Because they have their own video. I, I don't want to put MP5 four stars compared to MP1s. Uh, no, 10k. Lowish HP. Healthy charge for the hit count, but suffers here. And double quick, double buster, so ruler Scotty stuff. First skill is it sucks that I have no fucking idea why these are one turn. These should be three turns, because these are his only steroids from understanding. And you tied them to a fucking dodge, just like Jack. I wonder why, like, and this guy does not have Jack hit count, so what the fuck were they smoking? What, what, what indeed did they think they were doing? Second skill, star weight and 15 stars. Cool, he actually do, does need it, and these effects combo. But, uh... 
No, I'm not even complaining about stars because Roller Scotty gives stars and he's quick. 30% defense, 30% MP gain. Yeah, my whole issue is that these are one turn. His only offensive skills are one turn. That is shit. I don't think units should be this heavily reliant on Scotty to give them like damage and refund. My opinion though. Anti saber for some fucking reason. I don't know. And then MP, cool. 10 hit single target, removes defensive buffs. Doesn't happen uh before damage, unfortunate. And then he insta kills. Oh my fucking god, I forgot he insta killed. Yeah, no, fuck that. Mm -mm. Bad normal effect. They should just buff the MP, move it here, give him some kind of uh, damage buff. Boom. He's already better at that point. Hits slightly harder than Fran, but doesn't matter because those are one turn buffs. Yeah, you're going in C tier. You get to join Sigurd. Yeah, no, unironically, I think you two belong in the same tier. How fucked is that? That's how that's how low my opinion of Sigurd is. All right. Now I really get to get the taste of shit out of my mouth because this has been three units in a row. Hang on. Yeah, now it really is out of my mouth. All right, this guy, he spills the de um, the details on Guchan, and it's fucking hysterical. You think he is a lackey? He is not a fucking lackey. He has all the fucking dirt. Oh, you remember that time that Guchan said she was off to uh, do something really important? Yeah, no, she was just sitting in her room eating cho uh, chocolate pretzels upside down and reading a book while you were out there farming like he he is that type of friend it is fucking awesome and he's like good as a tertiary support Lo uh not low average uh attack and then 12.6 hp it's okay for a four star not amazing yeah also the drip on this costume this is such a nice costume Uh, 0.65% gain with decent hit counts, and he gives a star gen, so it is very likely that you will be clicking arts crits. Not super likely, but the chance is significantly better than what normally is. And no real complaints about uh, hit counts here. We're at 227, so hit counts are starting to be more stabilized. First skill, two attacks, three turns, invo, and charisma, 20%. It's charisma with an invo for himself as support. Makes a whole lot of sense. Second skill, 20% targeted battery, and then buff success chance, 40%. Uh, there is an issue with that this, and it's one turn. Like, when you compare it to Ozzy's, his is AoE for the entire party. It, like, it is literally this effect, but AoE. Um, but it's not three turns. And you kind of do want to pop this on himself. For arts buff, buffs art star gen by 50%, and party crit damage by 30, uh, 50%. If you can run him in a party with... It's like you do want, like, you want to help people with imperial privilege. Yeah, imperial privilege. But you also want to give this effect. Like, I would, it's, these are not as massive buffs as imperial privilege, but I still wouldn't want to be missing out on them. Like, for Nero, oh, fuck no. 40, like, one of the best imperial privileges in the game. You think I'm going to give it up for this shit? No. 
Like, it's always going to be unit dependent, but... I really want them to buff this skill and make this AoE. This can say targeted, so Ozzy's battery is better, but I want this to be AoE. MP, drain, credit attack chance down, damage cut for the party. Uh, unlike John, this actually scales normally. Because this is like similar to her scaling, except her hers goes like 500, 15,000, 20,000, and then goes up to 25 or th uh, 3,000. Yeah, like his, his uh, MP is like suppress fire and then gives another charisma. That's even stronger than before. And I would... He can work in stall comps. Like, he can really work in stall comps. It's just how fast is it actually going to be? Because, like, he is providing a lot of shit. It's just, like, this is not party-wide, which you'd really want if you were suppressing fire this much. So tertiary support, put him in B. Uh, yeah, like he is distinctively lacking buffs. He would be easier to put in A if he had any buffs that make his kit flow better, but he doesn't. But it, like, it doesn't matter. He stands out and it's like he works in arts farming that need imperial that have imperial privilege and that really is all that matters like whether he's providing sergeant that's not that's the other thing the sergeant isn't 100 percent. so if they buff his third skill and make it the the aoe 20 can stay yeah this aoe yeah let me bring it back up this aoe 20 can stay but if they make it so, like, this is not chance-based, he's not supposed to use it on himself, and it's just AoE, like, flat, and this is 100%, like, caster gill, I have no complaints at this point. Like, then then he is actually Imperial, priv impri yeah. Imperial Privilege full support. He does not have to worry about popping this on himself. Yeah, that that is honestly the buff I'm waiting for, for a third skill to be, like, fixed and not limited. All right, single target arts, Benny Emma. She immediately is going in A+, plus, and the plus this time is not because she could go to EX. It's because it depends on who she's fighting to go into EX. If you are fighting someone that's chaotic evil uh, and you're using Black Girl, Benny Emma is going to sh shit out so much fucking damage. She's going to shit out so much fucking damage. Base attack, right at the average. HP, little low, but she does have healing in her own kit. 0.56% MP gain. And fucking phenomenal art, uh, quick heart that isn't gimp like uh, Nightingale. Triple hit arts, and she's got two of them. Five hit extra attack. This thing is only held back by this. Not so much this. But yeah, upstairs looks good. Also, it's so fucking weird. Also, fucking glowing, demonic fucking uh, burb. Oh, it doesn't look as demonic. Brings the color. Yeah, I just I fucking love how it just like everything gets bright. It's like depressing, like uh it just color just shows up. Child servant on her is weird considering like her personality, but then like it's the work personality and then it's hers. It's weird. It's more has to do with like her story. She is a child, like she is a always portrayed as a young child. It's like, 
It's like the Little Mermaid. You don't think of Ariel like after she got married. You think of her like as a preteen, right? Yeah, that that's the comparison I want to go. Like you don't like her at her most popular. You don't think of like Queen. You think of her as like a preteen, like where her, most of her story actually was. Uh, dodge, 40% crit damage. Again, this skill not buffed often, but there has been a unit that of the same rank that did get it buffed. So chance for Benny Enma. And I definitely would like her to have a star bomb. Uh, yeah, no, I definitely want her to have a star bomb somewhere. Second skill, defense down, crit attack chance down, MP seal. Heals them for a thousand. If you think this is a fucking demerit, you are joking. Since when does a thousand HP actually fucking matter in this game? Oh, I can't three turn. The enemy had two HP left. Oh, what am I going to do? My tur uh, min turn is ruined. Like, are you fucking kidding me? If you're worried about thousand damage, then go rail your fucking unit. Third skill, 20% attack. Buff removal resistance for the entire party for one turn. Um, This is really going to come up in Lost Belt uh, 7. Just so you guys know, you're really going to want something like this. 20 battery for the entire party. Heal for yourself and then another 1,000 heal. Oh, no. The enemy has 2,000 HP now. Oh, even though I popped this when they had full health. Oh. Oh, shut the fuck up. 20% debuff resistance, 10% crit damage, 10% star gen, 10% arts, and completely immune to skill seal. You cannot stop her. She can, she's always going to be able to pop these skills. You do not see, like, immunity like this often, and it is always nice to, nice to have. Especially if the boss is going to be spamming this shit. Anti-assassin. Honestly, this one makes more sense because Oni. Um, there are a lot of Onis that have to deal with assassins. Or like very popular Onis that have to do with assassins. That are also chaotic evil. Oh, actually, no. That is why. That's why she has this uh, assassin. Because most of them are either chaotic evil or chaotic evil. Like, out of all the classes that you'd have that distinction, it's either assassins and berserkers. And there is no goddamn way they were going to give her anti-berserker. There is no shot they would have ever given her anti-berserker for how high her damage numbers actually go. Five hit single target. Power mod against chaotic. Power mod against evil. These are two separate mods. They do not need to be chaotic evil. If they're chaotic evil, you get 80%. This scales with overcharge. You're in an arts team. Getting more overcharge isn't impossible. Although for her, you're probably not arts chaining too, too much if you actually want to take advantage of these power mods. Like, especially if they're chaotic, chaotic evil. Like, you're not going to want to be doing a turn of, like, Castor MP. Benny Emma and then Tomomo, you're gonna want to do like Benny Emma card card, and preferably in a mighty chain, because like this quick card at the end of a mighty chain actually is gonna refund some shit. Yep, and then she gets power mods. Yeah, she changes based on if you are playing fighting uh, chaotic or uh, evil or chaotic evil. Chaotic Evil, she goes to EX. Uh, let's show it on the damage. Benny and Ma, both of them, she jumps up to doing more than base Musashi. Uh, and then you have Black Rail, arts buffs and everything. She doesn't have any, like, she only has an attack buff and power mods. Uh, running Black Rail and then just normal arts buffing. And her damage just goes really well. Uh, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and this is like non black rail as well. Yeah, there's there's no worries here. There's there's no worries about damage here. Like the only issue is turn two and getting back to the MP. Uh but you just need face guards. Like her damage could she could easily run black rail. Uh and you just need to have good uh RNG or her to get hit a lot. And then you're uh booming. So yeah, A plus because she's arts. She can run black rail. She can go up here. But not right now. Maybe maybe depending on who the other Wait. Yeah, because it's between her, Dio Scurry, and Trunk Sisters. And and also Saito. And like one of those got like between these three units, like one is definitely an MP spammer. Like over the others. Arts card is best, uh, debatable. Uh, I'm gonna say debatable on that one. Lakshmi. This is John. If her luck was fucking inverted. This is Murphy's law. The servant. Anything bad that could happen to her will happen to her. Like trip and fall on a sword. That is this character. All the clumsiness. Like Art, uh, Archer John got all like the magical craziness. This one got all the derpiness. Truly unfortunate. But not related to John in any way. They just designed her like this because she, in history, is actually called John Dark of India. But yeah, this final ascension looks the most like John. While like. Most people aren't going to see this at a first glance on Ascension 2 or 3. On first glance, you're not going to see John, but 1 and 4, you'll definitely see it. MP charge healthy at 1.0. Low hit counts on quick and arts. Uh, she technically can do farming. It's just your refund is going to be really tight. Like, really tight refund. If she did not have... Uh, 1.0, it would not be possible because I believe it's four hits. Yeah. Uh, I believe she's on this sheet too. Yeah. Like the fact that as a four hit, you're even on this list doesn't even matter. You're using traces. Like you're using, it's a four hit quick. Are you expecting for her to refund like Charlemagne? Uh, you, yeah, I don't know what to say. First skill. 20% attack. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Wait. Oh, it was Lakshmi. That was it. Because I was, when I was thinking of Blang Ling, I was thinking, okay, wait, there is someone that does do this for three turns, and it was uh, Lakshmi. Now I remember. Okay. Yeah. 20% attack for the party, 60% chance for uh, Star Gen. And party crit damage. And these are decent numbers. And they're this is literally what Lang Ling has. Targeted invul, 60 uh percent yeah, 60% chance for uh healing buff or healing per turn, sorry, and 60% chance for damage cut of two thousand. Unfortunately, this is three times three turns. And then this buff skill literally lets her farm and still be a support so guts on a pretty good uptime 20 percent quick 20 percent mp gain which is desperate every quick unit needs to have this in their kit if they want to be farming otherwise their refund is always going to be uh very tight especially if it's like not buffed and they are still able to farm when they get the mp gain buff there is no issues with their farming and big thing Party buff success rate up 30%. She has Magic Resist and Goddess Essence combo because uh, Lakshmi Bai 
Uh, yeah, Lakshmi Bai is the goddess. Like, lo like we call her... I forget what it was, because I'm not super knowledgeable about Indian mythology, but Lakshmi is the goddess of luck, and Lakshmi Bai is not. Right? <laughs> oh, I'm just going to say it here. Uh... Uh, bulging caster. Yeah, we know who that is. Uh, talking about actual mythology. Uh, like this was a story thing that they said that she was inhabited by uh, Lakshmi Bai. Uh, his causes rejecting outside enemies. Her causes. Yeah, uh, yeah. There you go. Ah, uh, a lock, a Lakshmi. That was it. A Lakshmi. It wasn't lock. Yeah, okay. She's possessed by a Lakshmi, and that's why her luck is so bad. Does have quick performance up? Nice. Uh, anti berserker, cool for farming. Otherwise, it's whatever. This is, uh, this is kind of support ish. This part was support. Yeah, like she was always support, and then the buff made it so she could do shit on her own. Four hit AOE removes the offensive buffs and reduces crit attack chance. This is uh. As a farmer, you are going to be very, very underwhelmed. Not going to cap. You're going to be extremely underwhelmed. But she's not only a farmer, and that's why she's in the same tier as uh, Lang Ling. If she was only a farmer, she'd go to C. May May yeah, no, she'd go to C. But she can do other shit. So she gets to stay and be. Ah, uh, the servant. The servant that we have Rio to thank for. If it wasn't for Rio, we would never have a Stolfo Saber. This is canonical. This is 100% proven true that Rio was the first one that actually made Saber Astolfo. Um, even though it's, uh, yeah, that I'm not like, I'm not going to cap Rio. Rio is the reason I got as involved into fate because if the main company is promoting like parody like this, they can take a fucking joke which not a lot of video game companies have. I'm not going to lie. They maybe took it a little bit too far, but like it's a Stolfo guy literally doesn't give a fuck and does it to troll the shit out of people. The guy is so fucking comfortable in his own body. But I think it also might be he just doesn't. His sanity is gone, so he doesn't care. It could be either or. It's mostly this, though. Base attack, good for a five-star. HP, it's okay. Star gen, MP charge, 0.52. Okay on the face cards, but holy shit, that extra attack. Uh, unfortunate that he does not have higher gains because his gains on this would be really good. Uh, you need to give him as much attack as possible for this to pop the fuck off. But damage doesn't translate to hit counts nearly as much from my understanding it's just the damage is there it's a refund that goes by hit counts so this character is a fucking hot mess in terms of gameplay but he still performs like really really well first skill got buffed 20% gauge and then 20% turn along with a debuff cleanse and 20 stars on a 5 turn cooldown Second skill, not the best terror, but at least it's not an eight-turn terror. 
think that's Gilles DeRay. One of them has like an eight turn terror. Uh, but this also gives him three attacks, three turns of dodge. Cool. Keeps him alive. If he's solo, this is going to go by real quick, but this also might keep him alive too. And then this, this fucking skill. 20% attack, 30 crit damage, and then star weight for buster cards when he only has the one. It's not as bad now because of Mighty Chains. Like, this actually does make... But you wouldn't be... Ugh, you wouldn't be using double Ruler Scotty with him. With him only having the one buster card. You're, he has two quick cards. MP doesn't... It doesn't matter, but the quick cards are going to suffer if you don't have regular Scotty there. Quick up, 10%. Good. He needs it. Anti-rider. Okay. Yeah, no, this makes sense. And 20 gauge. Uh, you need this if you want to do like okay with him for farming so he doesn't start at... uh. That like... Because he can't start from 50. He has to start from 60, but there is a good uh, fee for it. Can't find the chart. Uh, shit. Let me cut. Like, two empty damage chart. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, Gabby. Uh, I'm just going to finish finish all stop, a stop flow, and then I'll post it. MP. Nine hit single target. NP seal and quick ramp up. This is like why his damage on this is as good as it is. Like no traits and he's like beating, almost beating out Benny Emma when both of them are starting from 50. And like it takes Benny Emma to have both their traits to just match the raw damage Astolfo has. And then he also can like follow up with crits that are like roided the fuck out that Benny Emma just does not have. Like, you have the power mods, but he has the actual crit damage. They kind of, they're, I believe Astolfo gets more out of it because crit damage and power mods are part of the same part of the equation. So if you have one, having the other doesn't matter as much. Uh, but relying on you having, like, quick cards and stars to crit on them is not guaranteed with regular Scotty. Luckily, again, he has this star bomb here. But, uh, yeah. I, like, this skill needs to be buffed. Truly, I think that. Needs to be buffed. Get rid of this and just make it in general star weight. Because this is such a fucking yikes. Because it takes away stars. Like, when you have the buster card and you have more than two of his cards, you are going to be hurting if you don't have enough stars because all the stars are going to go to the buster card. And if you don't have a mighty chain, well, fuck you. Don't a because this kit is a hot mess. His damage is fine. Everything about it is fine. His kit is just a fucking mess. And it, like his kit is infuriating, and that's that's the only reason he's on a. Like if they fix his third skill, like so it's not trying to buff up one card out of his entire kit. Like, I can put him in A+, plus, but he's even with that, he's not topping the EX. He's not going to top who's going into EX. All right. Uh, let me get this for you, Gabby. Okay. So, wait, which one do you, uh, which one do you need? Inception time. Oh, so that's what that's like to see that. 
Well, I'm glad I have that there. Uh, I'm just going to post all three. And last one. Yeah, one is like all MP damage with their own kit, and then the other two are like actual setups that you'd get uh, tested damage for. All right. Oh, my viewer count went up. Chat view botting, by the way. Definitely view bot myself. I have my stream up in like ten, like five different tabs. Gabby's the only one here besides me. Smile. Oh, and Goomba. So I must have miscounted. I know that was, that was a joke, Abby. That was the joke. It, it's funny because my like it actually did show my viewer count went up when I was posting it. All right, next Dio Scurry. And I'm not gonna lie, I know people like really, really, really like Trunk Sisters. But I definitely prefer Deal Scurry. Uh, this servant takes the weaknesses of both cards and flips them. Uh, they do not have a lot of Buster Synergy, but it, it, when you're doing this much crit and spam, like it's hard to argue against. I will say you d just like. Any of these uh, MP spammers, it is always more helpful if they're at a higher copy just so the gain they have can go above 100. At, so if you get drained, you're not shit out of luck. Because that is worst case scenario for these MP spammers that don't have batteries. They're able to refund 100% or they get stopped just short. And if they had access to higher percentage, it wouldn't be that much of an issue. All right, first skill, 11.8K, HP, almost 15K. Like, so high are base stats than normal. Like, usually you have to pick this one, this servant. They're, they're pushing 12K, and they're pushing 15K. Usually, it, it's usually not both. It's usually one or the other, and the other is, like, 13 or something. MP charge 0.51. It counts. All of them are fucking good. Buster card is whatever, but hit counts on these arts and quick. And then you have to consider what the skills do. It is just high refund. As long as you have one of their cards, doesn't matter which card type quick or arts, you are going to get a lot of refund off it and probably get back to a hundred percent. Yeah, it was five. Oh, wait, no, it's five again. What the fuck? I swear, chat. I don't even have my phone. I don't have my tablet. I didn't open any other tabs. I swear. The only other Twitch page I have is the, uh, the content manager where I see all the bots and shit. I'm not actively in chat. No. All right. First skill. Uh, on attack buffs or quick at arts. On six turn cooldown, quick cards gen 10 MP, arts cards gen 10 stars. This might seem like a small thing, but it definitely isn't when you use them in gameplay. This feels so fucking nice, especially because this arts card is not face cards. It does not say normal attacking with arts cards, it is just arts cards. So, it MP by default with this skill up will gen 10 stars. If you do a brave chain, it doesn't, and it doesn't even matter what cards you're using, you're probably getting close to 30 or 40 stars. And that could be a full arts chain and you're getting 40, 30 stars. Again, if you're doing arts, 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 you need to have more than MP1 because you're going, you are going to go above 100% easily. Second skill. 
Probably weakest thing in their kit. Not gonna lie. 15% uh MP damage, 15% attack for one turn. They have very low numbers. That that is my complaint. That all the numbers for this are low, but in practice, they it functions so well. Debuff immunity is nice, but the timing for this might be too spotty because this is if this was three turn. Yeah, it feels like this should be a three turn. It feels like these should be three turns because it is um, Voyager of the Storm, but with another effect. I hope they don't treat this like Voyager of the Storm, though, and they treat it more like a tactics and like buff it so that both of these are three turns for the party. They can, and if they do that, they could keep this 15%. I'm not asking for this to be three turns 20. I just want this to be like not awkward. Then 20% arts and quick dodge for turn. This should be 30, but again, with how much synergy, I understand it, but they could they could bump it up. It doesn't it's not gonna matter in the long run. It it just isn't gonna matter too much in the long run. Yeah, and then you also take the passives into consideration. Here's the real laundry list. Oh boy. 20% debuff resistance, 8% quick, 7.5% madness enhancement. This is for uh which one is the guy? Caster. This is this is caster, not Pollux. Uh Avenger, again, this is caster. More MP gen when he gets hit. Star gen uh quick crit damage, Avenger passive, MP gen, and star gen. Oh my fucking god. My like they don't have the best skills. They're all lower values than they should, but the passives fucking make up for it. The pass the passives are another skill onto themselves. Don't worry about anti-ruler. You shouldn't be bringing them to fight a ruler, especially because they're single target. More options, but it they don't have a battery, so it doesn't matter that much. Personally, I go for this because Art Servant having a battery, if they can't, like, if they're able to refund 100%, it doesn't matter. It truly does not matter. So I'd rather have this and then bump up, like, their base, they're just refund. Still not done. Wombo combo of Invul and uh, Defense Pierce. Arts res down, quick res down. And these last for three turns, and you can get up to 30% depending on overcharge. Again, art servant, so getting higher overcharge is not the hardest thing. And then they have more on their card. They have a whole lot of small buffs that literally just start adding up to make a unit like as cohesive as this one. I do not get to use Dio Scurry that much. But they are literally one of my favorite because Art Servant that also, like, uses quick to the fullest. You could, like, and you could use Scotty with Dio Scurry for the quick cards and make them, like, fucking disgusting along with the uh, double cast Oria. At the very least, they're A+. Plus. I think they're functionally better than Benny Emma because they actually can do crits without out outside help but it's uh i'll take it into consideration until later and chat none of this has to do with pollux being like a a sweetheart and then her brother is just like over protected to the fucking max like i truly don't feel that strongly about them as characters um, but it is like, it is cute that like, she is like super friendly. And then this guy's like, Oi, back the fuck off from my sister. I saw you look at her hand. I'll fucking cut your eyes out. Wait, uh, one second. I'm going to blow my nose. Oh, 
All right, Tomoe goes in. Oh boy, um, this is an art servant that I don't think can actually three turn farm without Summer Chloe. That is a fucking travesty. Uh, and just makes it harder to use the servant in general if you need, if you are requiring Summer Chloe like that. It's the reason why Jason is ranked in EX because the four star arts AOEs can't fucking loop. I don't know why. I don't know why they did that. But yeah, she's okay as a crit servant, but the uh, looper gets, she can loop as long as you're base guarding afterwards. Uh, decent attack, low HP. Like this is actually fairly low. Uh, hit counts, they're average or slightly above average. First skill. So you can prevent this stun here. You can prevent it with the third, uh, with the third skill. But if you got hit by any other debuff before that, you are fucked. You cannot get rid of this Nighthawk thing. You can't. You can get rid of the stun, though. Guts, one time, three turns. 100% crit damage for three turns. I mean, like, I kind of think that is worth it. If you're able to prevent this and you get basically 100% crit damage for free, I mean, like, why would you not take it? This part sucks. Art's up for 30% for one turn. This, why? Why why give a one turn but oh yeah, because it's four turn, that's why. Uh yeah. And five hundred percent star weight. This is basically a battery. You basically have to treat this like a battery. Um and make sure you do not kill whoever you're MPing. You need to hit them with an arts guard afterwards. Otherwise, you're not MPing again next turn. She gets better the less she actually kills things. She needs something to be stronger so she can Kick them in the face. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Stab at them with the VR controller. Third skill, 25 star bomb, not insignificant. 10 stars per turn. And this debuff immunity, one time, five turn. It does not have 100% uptime to, like, fully block this. And when you pop it, and, like, one time, like... If you get hit with any debuff, you're not able to mitigate the stun. So do have to be careful with using this, especially like since Castoria isn't going to be able to do much. Because she, like the stun is after the turn ends, not during. Castoria can't do anything about stuff that happens uh, after. And it's not like you can pop an MP after you get uh, stunned. You, the game will not let you uh, do it, even if you have an MP that will cleanse. You are not going to be able to click the card. MP3 hit AoE, which is where her issue stems. Even for arts, if you have 3 hit MP, you better have the most crack refund. Otherwise, you're not farming. Shows with Kiara, shows with Muramasa, shows with, like, fucking everyone. 20% arts up for one turn. It would be nicer if this was 3. 20% buster for one turn. Again, better if it was three. Puts burn. Good for Honey Lake. Spread of fire increases burn damage. And she did come out in the event where Honey Lake was introduced. So this does fucking make sense. She was created with Honey Lake in mind to be a crit DPS that gave zero fucks about dodge or invul. But... She suffers from the only buff lasting more than one turn being crit damage. Not the worst buff, but it's still not great, and she relies too heavily on supports.
Mm. It's one of these two. Okay, hold up. Okay, first off, are you even on this list? No, you are not. Oh, right, because this is single target. What what the fuck am I thinking? A single target. See, I, I'm thinking of her as a single target because that's how you kind of have to treat her. This is the other fucking reason. Like, Jason actually legitimately does more damage than her, and he ramps up. Yeah, see. Uh, like, crit damage, you can give crit damage to people. It is much harder to fix MP damage. Like, on this scale. On this fucking scale. When you're out damaged by a one star. You're out damaged by a one star that can rail all the way, like, 30 levels. Holy shit. Next up, we have Virgil. And I'm controlling the bias, because if you see me on uh, JP, you know how much I like this character. Like, my MP for Hajime, like, I bust him out when I need to, and he just loops 100%. It's fucking glorious. And if you play the Devil May Cry music, too, it just fits. Base attack good, HP low, MP charge 0.76. Hit counts little disappointing, not going to lie, but he is mostly an MP spammer. Most of his refund is going to come from his MP. Are you the storm that is approaching? Indeed. Motivation EX. First skill, 20 uh, arts and buster with a 20 star bomb. I would like this to be 30, but in the grand scheme, it does not matter that much. When you are getting 100% uh, arts up, you like 120 versus 130 really doesn't matter that much. You'd be better off going for a different buff type. Like fixing this, but we'll get to there. Dodge, one turn, 18% defense up for three turns. And then three attacks, three turns, and 100% crit damage for three attacks, three turns. The crit damage, I think they could keep being three times, three turns. Oh, yeah. Uh, shout out to getting fucked by a four-star Sigurd. Because a four-star has a better version of your runic, runic eyes. Holy fucking shit. Unfortunately, yeah, like the big issue here is this three attacks on the attack buff. This gets burnt out the fastest out of any other uh, three attacks type of thing. This will get burned out immediately because the other one, it's like card buff three times, three turns, crit damage three times, three turns. You can't, you can't uh, bank on different cards for this. You are going to use this in the first mighty chain which makes him refunding a little bit of an issue for the attack buff. But again, more likely than not, you're running him with Gastoria. So like, again, attack buff isn't something you don't already have. You're not going to be losing that much out because the Castorias are going to give you more attack than this skill anyway. If I do Mighty Chain with Quick MP, yes, if you put Arts Card last, you will refund. That Arts Card is going to refund so much. And for quick units, they usually, like, especially if they only have one arts card, that one arts card is usually roided the fuck out. Like, it's usually effectively, like, 2.2 minimum, and then it usually gets a lot better than that, too. Mad resist. 
crit damage, low values. 20% uh, battery, good for setups. Anti-assassin. Uh, I mean, I guess he was fighting assassins in real life. I mean, maybe. I, I don't this one I I don't I don't know. Maybe uh if Kondo ever comes out into the game, he's gonna be an assassin. Who knows? MP, seven hit, single target arts, reduces their crit attack chance, and most importantly, arts res down before damage activate uh lasts for three turns. In a boss fight, you will loop better every time you do it. So higher copies on this, the better he gets. Because you just hit overkill, like you break the bar so much easier. That is really where this is going to come into play. If you can break bar and just the MP, your damage will, like your refund for your uh, MP will just be better. Sooner you hit overkill, the better. A, because of the attack buff. Because of the way the attack buff works, it's frustrating. It's a frustrating thing, and you can use it up without, like, really thinking about it. This, you kind of have to be more conscious about it. Like, if you pop it, you're popping the second skill for damage. Like, you know you're popping it for damage. This is, like... Like... It, Print damage and attack up. Like, you can't ignore that. Like, that will be the difference between you getting overkill and you, you not getting overkill. Oh, we finally talked about Suna after me fucking decimating Grama. Yeah, uh, he is in such a better place in general than Rama. Like, he is so specific to fighting Oni, and Oni especially, and Demonic, but, I mean, as a single, like, without Nish, he's okay. He, like, he would be C. With Nish, he's definitely B, A. B or A. Base attack, good. HP, low. Charge, it's okay, but it he has stuff to make up for it. Uh, decent hit counts. Star weight for Buster cards for three turns. Three attacks, three turns of 50% crit damage. Does not matter the card type. Dodge for one turn. Star weight of arts cards for one turn. And MP gen for 50%. Buster up 40%, ignores evasion three turns, and reduce all enemy crit chance by three turns. And by seven arm of Ichijo Modori Bashi, Midori Bashi. Uh, this is a uh, Ibaraki do Doji, if you guys did not know. It's like, it says so in Hei and Kyo, but just in case you didn't know, and also Ibaraki is supposed to be like his old girlfriend that like, so some of this Japanese lore is just it, it honestly doesn't fucking make sense. Like they like so much of it is like you love this person and then they're it's time to kill them. Like, is that not every Japanese like servant in a fucking nut nutshell? Like so many Japanese servants are sociopaths. <laughs> they are so quick to kill each other. But I mean, that's humans in general, so you can't throw that much shade. Uh, this being 40% on a five turn, that's three turns, is way, like, a lot better than normal, though. It's not Arthur's buff level of, like, strong, but it's still decent. Oh, no, MP is not affected. MP is not going to give more refund, um, from my understanding. First card buffs don't matter except um i think buster lead because it influences your attack yeah i think buster lead might affect damage but that might only be a uh, buster brave chain or, or buster chain 
Because like refund, it's specific to face cards, but you, I'm pretty sure upping attack is just gonna do more damage. It's like different. Don't don't quote me on that. Uh, like I'm I'm tired as it is. Like I'm flubbing the words. I can't exactly think in depth game mechanics as well today. Give off res quick performance. He only has the one quick card, but it's still good quick card. Two hundred percent of uh super effective damage against Oni, along with a ramp up for anti demonic, uh power mod. This anti demonic, not the biggest thing. Uh, if you're fighting Oni, bring Suna. Cause like most of them, he is at least strong to. Or at least neutral. These three, especially Ibaraki, gets fucked up. And if you thought, if you want to add insult to injury, anti Berserker too. He is literally designed to kill Ibaraki with no, no exceptions. He fights Ibaraki. She is dead. Mount Oe, Oni Slayer. And where is Ibaraki from? Do have to look at damage though. Do have to look at the damage. Yeah, they have almost identical damage profile. The uh, MP1. Yeah, like demonic doesn't look that good. But this is power mod, so this applies to face cards. And Suna actually can do shit with his face cards. Rama, I'm pretty sure this is super effective, not a power mod. So, like, after he pops the MP, if he does not kill, he's fucked. Yeah, no, it's super effective. He does not have power mod. So I I would definitely take it like especially if we're comparing MP1s, I would definitely take Suna and his power mod. Oh, Suna and his power mod over super effective on this because it he's gonna crit anyway. His Buster crit is gonna hit kick way harder than yeah. Like you compare the difference like. His Buster Crit with Demonic Power Mod is going to matter more than whatever the fuck Rama is going to do. Like he has that one turn to crit damage, but that's it. So yeah, B. Uh, but if you are fighting Oni, he goes to A+. Plus, possibly EX. Uh, no, no, because at MP1, he'd still be beat out by Musashi. She will still hit harder. Yeah, he he is like one of those units that has the most potential to like actually go up. Actually, this is first extremely niche. Yeah, he's actually going to be the first one in extremely niche because his performance against Oni is so fucking different than his performance against uh, anything else. Are the charts with foes? It takes it in mind, but it like for the low cost and welfares, I was more liberal with putting them in niche, uh, because most of them were doing something niche. Like he, like this guy is so heavily focused on the Oni stuff that is he he is a different character if you have if you're finding an Oni or not. Yeah, I he is a different character. Um a lot of these sabers also don't have niches because they didn't really start handing them out until like the last couple years. Cause that's how they do want to balance the servants. Like they want to start giving anti-trait. Like, so one character is literally not farming everything in the game. Ah, uh, yes. Ibuki Doji. Out of here. Fuck out of here. Uh, nugget. 
Ah, yes, that's better. Praise Rita. Ibuki Doji. These, like, highlight what people are buying the new Samurai Remnant DLC for. Even though it's not this version of Ibuki. Uh, yeah, she de she definitely she definitely up there for some of my favorite characters. And, and it's weird because, like, she does, like, some of the same shit Mabe would do. But their reasoning for doing it is very different. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The charts are with foes. Sorry. Yeah, the charts are with foes. Uh, it says it in the re uh, readme. 1,000 foes, natural level, no grails. Uh, base damage included. And that's not class advantage. That is uh, the base damage modifier. Uh, like he here as says base damage multiplier. That's what it takes in consideration. So like casters have the 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. It takes that into damage for uh, the calcs. Yeah. Ibuki doji. Yeah, I, I know I fucked up the uh, timestamps, but it's whatever at this point. I'll go back and fix it later. I'll see like a huge gap and I'll know to fix it. She has stupid high attack for a saber. Like, I don't, I think, I think she has highest attack of all sabers. Uh, and okay HP, but she also has, like, survivability in her kit, too. MP charge 0.78 with a gorilla deck with all at least average hit counts. So this is uh, point, or two point uh three four yeah two point three four uh gain from the arts card like before any other considerations or sorry total gains uh two point three four percent which is better than average but she also has the berserk uh she only has one of these so yeah, Mighty Chains pops off, but there's an issue with using Mighty Chains for her, and that comes from this first skill, her having the three times three turns. Now, she is able to do farming, so this is not as huge as a concern as you'd think, and if you're not farming, this like you could use this up in one turn in a Buster Brave Chain, roid, all roided out by Queen Skya. So that's already going to do like a million damage to begin with. Uh, and issue with double stacking this, unless you're using Atlas, you cannot double stack this in the same turn. Uh, in which case, even for that, you're going to need 200% gain and like you still aren't MPing, you're critting. Waste. Because then you'd have 200% gain and not MP. 30% Buster, 30% Defense, and 20 stars. And it's like low HP, but very tanky girl. Also, she is like fucking 10 feet tall, like in her battle mode. Like she canonically is like 10 feet tall and then she shrinks down to uh, six feet. Like crush people's heads like grapes between her thighs. And for a lot of people, that will not be a bad death. But she's a god, so uh, and a Japanese god too. So, uh, uh, good luck with that. MP seal, one turn, fifty percent crit damage, and power mod against undead enemies. Would be unfortunate, but Summer Wu kind of like makes it so you can enable undead. So this is less of an issue nowadays. Uh, yeah, it's not. The best thing, but it's usable these days. This uh, esports summer woo level one and super scope, and then just hope she dies, and then you're good on this. Magic resist plus uh oh no, these are two different things. Debuff resistance twenty percent, quick up nine percent, buster up twelve percent, and damage cut built in. 
So if you like bring her to the start of the game, she actually probably won't take any damage clearing through the first couple singularities just because of this. Like she legitimately this plus this, she actually might not take damage when you're just cruising through. Uh and then buff removal resistance 20%. This is This is like the same as like you normally shrugging off debuffs. Like you can't bank on this, but it's just nice to have. Anti ruler, you're not gonna use this. Mana loading strictly for ease of use for farming. If you have a 30% CE from a lotto, like you can still start like normal farming on uh turn like without needing the MOB. It's just lit slightly jankier, but it's doable. Any like 50% user that you might use in event farming, like you need this unlock. Uh even like uh Ushi goes in, you should still have mana loading unlocked, despite her being like an absolute op and uh nuking stuff with crit damage. Uh you still need mana loading to like just keep things clean when you need it. But yeah, definitely like if you can get this, like her just face card performance is really, really nice. MP got the wombo combo, ignore invul, defense pierce, buster is down. But it's after damage. Big oof. Would be really, really nice if they buffed this MP. So, yeah, on this farming chart, Ibuki is at the bottom by a significant amount. Part of this is everyone else here, but Salter has a buffed MP. That's where, like, all of this comes from. But, I mean, she's also able to super scope. And her, like, if Mordred hasn't been buffed, like, I can't put Ibuki in EX. I just can't because Mordred has a lot of the crit. Like, Ibuki has crit potential, but it comes nowhere close to Mordred. And Mordred also has a con consistent crit buff. Yeah, like I'm I really like Ibuki, but she is falling behind with all the buffs the older ones are getting. Like these these two in particular, like she was closer to a lot closer to Morgan, and now she is like nowhere close like Morgan's damage just shot up. Do you think she's better in a challenge quest? Especially if like these are gonna come in. But Mordred is just like consistently good crit damage that you're not thinking that hard about. Well, this you have to count. You have to count your fucking attacks. Not even your crits or your buster cards. You have to count attacks. And extra attack is never going to see the benefit of this. So pain. Yeah, truly unfortunate. Buff MP, buff first skill so she doesn't lose out. Uh, and then I could move her up, but she's probably not going to EX anytime soon. Yeah, Arjuna Alter, power mod against anyone that has a fucking debuff. A debuff. Doesn't matter what the fucking debuff is, and then he also puts a buster res down first. Like, the stupidest shit. Be more like this. I like I wouldn't be against it since they like didn't yeah, like Abuki does need it, but uh, I I don't know how much she's actually gonna benefit from. MP damage, MP2 becomes MP3. I mean MP2 becomes MP1 with res down. It's going to look good, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to look good, but I'm not sure if she's going to like dethrone anyone. All right. Next Muramasa. Yeah. And this, this one is going to be upsetting for people. 
if you wa- if you watch the last one, it's gonna be upsetting. I like Shiro as much as the next guy. I'm not gonna deny that Muramasa like he was good when he came out, but it, what was his competition? What was his competition when he came out? It was Jason. It was Tomoe. Yeah. And Jason didn't even have the MP buff. He did have the ramp up, but he was not. He did not have good stats. He was a one star. Moramasa comes in, and now you're actually able to farm Lancers with an art saber and not want to, like, commit off it. And Black Rail Loop. Base attack, it is low for a five star, like, slightly low, but not that low. Uh, MP charge 0.59%. Again, this is like, this is normal. It's not super bad. He is more likely to crit on these cards. But it does make some of his refunds scuffed. And he is supposed, he's like one of those units that like you are supposed to use him with double cast Aurea. He is built with you using her. Also the lore thing. Uh, that big, big lore thing about why you're supposed to be using double cast Aurea with him. Um, but yeah, like you substituting cast Aurea for other farmers directly affects how good his damage is. Like, he really wants to cast Aurea in peace. First skill Omni card buff. Just gonna point out Yui Shosetsu would appreciate it but the timing for the mps might be a little scuffed you'd still pop yui before the, there isn't an issue of like timing like you wouldn't pop his mp and then yui's you would still pop yui but you only have a turn to do this to get uh yui's buffs 1000 star weight and only 15 stars i don't think they're ever going to make this three turns i don't think they should make this three turns because this is he is gonna be ridiculous like just brave mighty chain spamming crit spamming Muramasa. I know a lot of people would like to see infinite sword works, but I, I, not like this. All right, no problem. See you, Gabby. Thank you for adding to the conversation. Makes watching this a whole lot less boring. And like next time, I'll we have all this gap over here. I'll probably put chat up, but just not this one. Second skill, Invul Pierce. If the enemy has a dodge or Invul, you do even more crit damage. Or you do 100% crit damage for the turn. Or, no, sorry, I have that flip. You only get 100% crit damage if the enemy has dodge or evasion when you attack them. If they have hit base evasion or Invul and you, like hit him enough time that this goes away, you will not have the increased crit damage. From my understanding, it's very similar to how um, William Tell, uh, his MP was coded. Or, he, yeah, I think it's similar to how it was coded. You need They need to have this effect up, otherwise it doesn't work. For people with unremovable invuls, or unremovable evasions, like this is free fucking damage. This is literally free damage. 100% star gen, so even uh, his arts card gen stars, and with him spamming MPs, yeah, you'd be popping this. Uh, it makes uh, it makes when you're fighting chonkier enemies, you could follow up with crits and get better refund. And then, again, 100% crit damage. So even if you don't hit this, he's still hitting very hard. Third skill, 50% battery and blaze. Every time he does a normal effect attack, he gets 10 gauge. So his buster cards, don't. he doesn't need Vich for him to refund with buster cards. Sick, dude. And unfortunately, this is not, this is not the NPC version. Now, granted, Divine Spirit is so... Oh, it's all these, it's all these characters. 
unfortunate. He would literally be broken if he had this. Because, uh, like, especially Divine Servants. But, like, uh, like, fucking imagine if they actually release a servant like this. You, like, you, this is so much shit for free. There's no way you would ever be able to summon for a servant like this. I say that now and then. Uh, I say that now, but this is literally Sherlock's MP plus, I don't know, Summer Castoria. Oh, shit. Yeah, this is Summer Castoria plus Sherlock MP on a skill. Magic resist, 17.5%. Territory creation A, arts buff, 10%. He at least always has an arts buff. Crit damage up 5%. Low number, but hey, 5%, like more damage, more damage. And super, uh, fuck. I want to say this is super effective. I want to, no, no, it's probably power mod. It's probably power mod because super effective is only on MPs. Yeah, I, I want to say this is just a, a power mod. Uh, if it is super effective, it's better. But I don't think you can have super effective damage on something that isn't an MP. Anti-caster actually comes up in farming. You get overkill quicker on a caster and you get more refund. So there is some merit to this, but extra uh, mana loading first. Maybe extra attack. Uh, especially if you're doing a whole lot of mighty chains, like not super big gains from it, but it's still going to like cleans up his kit. MP three hit AOE would be a red flag if you didn't actually use him. Uh, he is not looping a hundred percent. He is looping specifically to like 70. So Castoria 30% can get him back up to full. As long as you have mana loading unlocked, you can save both Castoria's 30% uh, for each wave. And usually that's all you really need. If he's looping like slightly under 70, uh, it's you have to do a little bit of face guarding because he needs to kill on the first hit. Any AoE art needs, especially with low hits, needs to kill on the first hit. Otherwise, refund is going to be scuffed for the next few. Reason you pop Castoria MPs is because he directly gets better refund the more MPs are popped in front of his. Uh, that's why Yugi Shosetsu works actually really well because not only uh, does her MP buff like help him get overkill faster, but it actually does affect directly affect his refund small amount but this is just it just adds up when you're popping this multiple times mp damage does not ramp up and defense pierce along with removing offensive buffs so even if you're not loop farming like you're just suppressing fire and as long as you can't keep spamming the mp the enemy can't do much damage to you Issue with him now is he is a jack of all trades and master of none. As a crit servant, he doesn't ha get enough stars. He does not get enough stars to really pop off as a crit servant. Looping. Uh, there is a far better AoE arts looper now that can loop 40% off one fucking enemy. Uh, and that's the en like, and that's an enemy that's like thousands, like hundred thousand plus HP, like from full, and he can just loop. Yeah, we we all know who it is. Uh yeah, we're almost uh at the end of this too. But yeah, Muramasa, I like the guy. I'm not, I I don't regret going for MP two. I do regret trying to go farther than MP2. That I that was that's a regret I'm uh 
I have on that when he first came out. Uh, I definitely should not have tr tried the thirst for the MP3. Uh, but yeah, needs a buff at this point. Ah, oh, Bargus. I love this character so much. The idea, like, first off, yeah, no, it is. The fucking muscles this woman has. And she says this is as small as she can make herself. And she is this jacked. Like, I grew up a uh, martial artist. I don't have problems, like, fighting a woman. And honestly, like, a woman that can kick my ass, actually, like, it's not going to get me off. Like, I'm not, I don't get an erection thinking about, oh, this woman can punch the shit out of my dick. No, fuck that. But, like, I would, like, I wouldn't mind a sparring session and have, like, no regrets over, like, a girlfriend like that. Like, like we just go to a gym and throw hands for a little while. Like, I don't mind that. Like, I'm disciplined enough. I'm not going to go for cheap shots. And as long as she's not going for my uh, throat or my balls, I don't mind. But, yeah, just, like, how this character's gameplay is as well. Oh, she just needs a buff. She just needs, like, her third skill. She needs a way to secure this. And then we're cooking with fire. Like, good MP buff or good skill three buff. Low base attack. Uh, slight issue, but she is more of a solo servant than a farmer. HP. Uh, it's low, but she also ups her max HP, so it, this is a non-issue. Complaining about uh, low base HP when she literally gives herself max HP uh, with MP spam. 7.4% gorilla deck. Uh, currently on NA, she's not, she doesn't feel that good, but once Mighty Chains come out, Vargas, like, gets one hell of a glow up, as does literally every single solo servant in the entire game. Every single farming, uh, solo servant, uh, gets buffed by Mighty Chains. And for her in particular, uh, MP, Buster MP followed by Quick Arts, it get, like, lets her actually keep credding and lets her keep spamming the MP. You're not going to be popping it every single turn under normal circumstances, but you will pop it every other turn. And you, with Vargas, you need to be popping MP as much as possible uh, just for survivability. Um, but she, her biggest weakness is she lacks hard survivability. Like, her survivability is make the enemies not do damage and, yeah, just try to be as tanky as possible and heal up. First skill, static, 18%, and 28% on sunlight. This is Gwen's skill, but just slightly lower. I uh, don't think they need to buff this unless you can secure sunlight. And she does not... She doesn't have anything else that has to do with sunlight. But, I mean, Gawain was the same way. It's just that Gawain had, like, the lower thing that he needed to be able to bring the sun. Vargas, this is kind of it. It's like, if Gawain got his MP buff before he got his skill 2 buff, like, that shit wouldn't make sense because he couldn't bring the sun no matter what. This is where they differ, though. 30% uh, buster. She has so much buster in her own kit that she... Honestly, like, Vich does not do that much for Vargas, especially because she's supposed to be soloing. Like, the extra buster Vargas does not need. Uh, survival of the fittest. Every time she attacks, normal attack, she gets 1,000 heal. If you run her with uh, the Halloween CE that ups healing received, you can get, like, almost 2k HP from a normal attack. Meaning she heals eight, like close to 8,000 health in one turn just from her soloing. And not only that, 
if she at normal attacks, she removes the latest buff. And if she does remove the buff, defense down. When she solos, she rips people to fucking shreds and they cannot do a ton of damage to her. Vargas needs like invo or a guts on one of her skills and then she's she's good. I, I don't have to worry about this unit anymore. Foul weather. When I like when I first saw Vargas, I thought that this was had to do with her lore with her being a calamity. It doesn't. It has to do the foul weather is the name of a person. A person that she ate and it made her stronger. So the chances of them changing this skill to not be a lore buff uh is so goddamn slim. It honestly kind of bums me out, but at the same time. Boy, was that funny to read. <laughs> Boy, was that fucking funny to read. Uh, this is also not hard survivability. It's only damage cut of three attacks, three turns. It is party wide, but her best role is a solo. So it would have been better if this was like 30 to 40% uh, defense up. Not for three attacks, but just flat out for three turns. What are you going to do? Uh, and then self-regeneration buff. She charges the entire party's gauge by 15% every single turn. Uh, because of this, she's able to do double over on farming. It's just like, not, it's not the best. She doesn't need to be farming. Although summer Chloe kind of cleans it up a little bit. I still know she's not, not meant to be a farmer. Even more buster up. So from these alone, you have 69% buster up. I always love pointing this out. I always love pointing this out that she has 69% buster in her own kit. But that's also only if you're on sunlight. Anti alter ego. Definitely not something bad to have because in a solo situation, bringing Vargas against an alter ego would make a lot of sense. They do less damage to her. She does more damage to them. And yada yada, they like to buff themselves up a lot too. So Vargas makes sense. Like truly, like all of her appends are something you want, especially this is this is priority number one. If you're using Vargas as a solo, this needs to be priority number one. MP five hit AOE Buster damage to all enemies. Ups her max HP by 3,000. That's why I said, like, don't worry about this. Uh, Vargas is a very common uh, 120 unit because of, like, the banner she comes out on. It's either Morgan or Oberon, two of the most summoned four units. Oberon, just in general, people having at least one copy. And then Morgan is, like, a very high MP5 120 uh, five-star. And she also reduces skill cooldown by one. And even more buster. So 89% buster. They, they couldn't just let her not have 69%. They had to fuck it up. Goddamn developers. Uh, nope. A plus. A plus. And this is not A plus possibly going to EX. This is she stays in A plus. What she does, she does extremely well. She would go into EX if she had a way to face tank MPs. Because right now, having a high amount of HP and some damage cut is not enough to face tank an MP if she's solo. Too heavily, too heavily reliant on Atlas. And yeah, she needs preferably a guts because then she could just heal back from the guts. And with her uh, doing skill cooldown reduction, I think it's fine if they put it on foul weather. I just don't know how, like how they'd actually do that because it is, it's not the name of a skill. It's the name of a person she ate. 
So you can't exact like unless she's eating someone else. Is Vargas, so it might happen though. Um, she's not getting a new skill three. Would really want it though. Okitan Saber. Contender for EX AoE quick. And it shows because she is able to loop with uh, one Scotty and one Castoria. Not Black Rail loop, but she is able to loop with a uh, Castoria in place of a Scotty. Uh, that's how cracked her refund actually is. And how much uh, quick units fucking eat up MP gain. They love it. They need it because their gains are naturally lower. Base attack, very high. Some of the highest in class, 12.4k. HP, a lot lower, like closer to Bargus. But Bargus is a four star at level 80. This is the level 90 unit. So Bargus has more HP. MP charge 0.67% with fantastic fucking hit counts. Uh, she doesn't have OG Okita level uh, gains, but like Okita servants in general have stupid fucking gains. And they're usually balanced around the class. Uh, this is the equivalent to 2.68% effective gain on the arts card. So it's a, it is a good, it's a strong refund one. Uh, first skill, 30% attack, 20% arts and buster up. This is a mana burst. This is a three turn mana burst. I don't care that these are low. Uh, she came out before ruler Scotty. So her having an attack buff when Scotty does not give an attack buff except on MP, big. 30% battery, 50% crit damage, star weight. Involve two attacks, three turns, and 30% MP gen. For it, this is almost copy-pasted Alter Ego except less damage and more focus on refund, which what is a buster unit and the others are quick. You have to change the kits. You have to. You can't keep the same skills as a buster unit on a quick unit. Because you are not using bitch to reset cooldowns. They need to be able to loop. 20% debuff resist. 10% crit damage. Anti-Berserker append. Awesome for a farmer and really does help out her refund. She gets overkill really quick. But you need this. Absolutely require this. Uh... And this is one of the cases where you would actually go for this instead of this. Because this will... Sh you fighting berserkers and farming is going to happen way more often than you using the extra attack. As much as I like this being buffed. If you can get all three, cool. I don't think you're... I don't know if people are going to go for uh, Bond 15 on this unit or whatever it is. I think it's Bond 13. That you can get a second append on MP1. Oh, can they please just let us swarm servant coin somehow? Somehow. And then it makes so much of this less of a headache. MP. AoE 8 hit quick. Removes all offensive buffs before damage. No ramp up, but you do get 20% quick up. Honestly, this is good enough. Very well put, put together kit. No specific niches. Can be brought to fight most people. A plus. Possibly going to EX. Uh, yep. And, oh, fuck me. Yeah, I'm fucking up the markers. Definitely fucking up these markers. Oh, okay. Trunk sisters. I really, really don't have that good of an opinion on these care on this character. I know Mist really likes them, but uh, like for me, the buffs you gain don't last long enough, and they're just such small value. Um, that. You aren't using double Castoria with her 
you'd want Vich so that the ramp up of the effects are is better. Like you'd still have a Castoria, but it makes it a lot more iffy. It's better in a challenge quest where you can actually like pull that off of like resetting the cooldown with Vich and like still uh swapping out units. But that that 100 percent is a setup. And I'm never I'm not even gonna try pronouncing these. Not even gonna try. I do not speak Vietnamese. Uh Wait, is it, wait, do they speak Chinese or is it? Uh, official language. Uh, Vietnam. I think it's Chinese. No, Vietnamese. Yeah, no, no, I'm not tripping. I knew, I knew, I knew Vietnamese wasn't just, yeah. Wasn't just not nationality. All right, base attack, good above the midpoint. Okay, HP. I believe they have healing on MP like uh, Percival, so e even this number isn't that big of a deal. MP charge point four three. Part of the issue I have with them, like they are supposed to be loop farmer. They have the hit count, but the base gains, if you're trying to do some funky shit, it's not going to work out well. Like, bitch, cooldown reduction, it's not going to work out well. Hit counts are good, and they like to mix arts and buster, unlike the Oscuri, which do art, uh, arts and quick. I do think people would prefer this just because a lot of people have biases against quick. Fifteen percent party art uh, attack and fifteen percent arts buff. Usually these are twenty. I'm just saying, like, part of my issue is that the numbers that they have are just like lower than what they should be, even on lower, like lower rarity characters. Second skill. 15% arts and buster. And when you hit a buster card, arts card goes up. If you hit an art uh arts card, buster card damage goes up. Again, these only last for one turn. This is where I have an issue. You are relying on card RNG to up damage and make refund more inconsistent. Doesn't synergize well with Mighty Chains. At the very least, Dio Scurry doesn't mind if they have to do a Mighty Chain. This, you are actively missing out on buffs if you do not hit Arts and Buster. And also, like, at least you have the option of whether you need more damage or you need more refund. This gives you the option in order to pop. But this, there is no, like, this... This character doesn't like uh, Mighty Chains. It doesn't work well for them. It directly fucks up their damage. 30% battery, 20% uh, MP gen rate for the party. 20% party crit chance resistance. This is just always nice to have. If you don't get crit, you stay alive more. Mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. Seventeen point five percent debuff resistance, eight percent quick up. Even though quick card is average, and you really don't want to press it, I uh, definitely want the uh, twenty percent because they have a thirty, just easier to start with, and more options. Uh, anti assassin. This uh, I don't know their lore well enough. I don't know who this is actually supposed to be, so I'm not. I'm not going to make assumptions. Oh, it's only nine. Who the fuck thought? Uh, Why the fuck did I think they had a thirteen? I don't. I don't fucking know. Uh, yeah. So nine hit, damage to one enemy, heals the entire party. Oh, it's healing per turn. It's not a flat heal. It's healing per turn. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, this is so. This is better for uh, 
like solo core and like you also just having supports like you even if you don't have tomo your team shouldn't be dying so this is more uh like reigns uh reigns and castoria than tomo and castoria do you think you should run tomo just to make it since these are solo numbers like uh five four six like if you can get if you can double stack this skill it looks significantly better the issue is trying to get to the double stack you're gonna have to sacrifice something to try to make that work overcharge is where the real ramp up is arts and busts are up base 10 again i don't like how low the numbers are i think they were too safe with this character that they do not want her to be that good but like these numbers are so low like especially when her like supports are gonna be like front loading her in arts it's like it's very much diminishing returns very much for diminishing returns but this is definitely me speaking from a point of bias just like uh my bias i like quick and i just think like this kit is re too reliant on non-crit damage like there is no crit synergy in the kit and is just like are all arts refund to the point where like you can get away without using castoria but you'd want castoria like she gives all the buffs Castoria gives to herself at lower at a lower amount. So like if you need to not use Castoria, you aren't suffering that much from not using double. But yeah. Like I'm not there's no way I'm putting her in like not putting her here. Uh He's at least uh, I'm actually thinking is she better than Saito or not? Uh, I yeah, I think Saito is better. Saito kind of just scales better cuz Archer is down is multiplicative with uh arts buffs. Well, these are just additive. At the very least, yeah. Um, Lancelot, I think, bumped down. Yeah, Lancelot bumped down. I do not think Lancelot is better than these two. Or aren't even on the same tier. He's not got on the buffs he's needed. All right. Next up, Charlemagne. Automatically, he goes here. Uh, and personal bias is going to come into this because I have both these units at very invested levels. Like, extremely invested. You could honestly swap these two and there isn't that much of a difference. They're both fantastic at what they do. Charlemagne... If there's ever a change to how crit stars work where you can like consume them to get more crit damage, he is going to fucking shine. He is an he loops like an art servant because of how many uh hits there are on his MP. He consistently goes to 99 stars. But the issue is you don't need that. He is built with, to the point that he does so much sh shit, but it's beyond overkill. I love this guy as a character to use. He is so fun. And I need to play Fate Stella, like actually finish it. I will do it. It's just going to be a minute. It's going to be a minute. And you guys are not going to see me play Fate Stella uh, Link on stream. Stella, I've played on stream, not Link. 
Because fuck trying to hook up my PlayStation to my uh, PCs again. All right. Base attack. He is better uh, than the midpoint by about 500. HP, high. Uh, but this, the reason his HP is high is he is supposed to be tanking hits. He is supposed to be getting hit. He needs this HP. 0.48%. His face cards suffer because of his MP. But again, it's not the biggest deal. He does like Mighty Chains. Even though he only has the one Buster card, he does genuinely like Mighty Chains. And his, honestly, his Arts card refund isn't even that bad. But yeah, nothing like stand out as amazing here for what matters. A like quick card only being four hits is whatever. First skill. You need to pop this as soon as possible and make sure you do not accidentally give him invo in any way, shape, or form before you pop this skill. If you pop, like, this is the most I'm not paying attention moment and you fuck up your entire run. He grants one ally invincibility for two attacks, three turns. If he doesn't have an invul himself, he gets 20% MP gen for himself. And when he takes hits, he gets uh, extra, uh, extra damage on his MP. And I believe this is super effective damage. But if he has an invul and it doesn't even have to come from this skill, he is going to MP himself for one turn, and you don't get this shit. This is probably, like, the most frustrating part of using him. If you are not paying attention, you need to know what you're doing for this. Otherwise, you are going to fuck everything up. And it's pro like, yeah, we'll just do the tier ease of use. I like Charlemagne more. Ease of use is here. Uh, that's why I've made A plus this year because there are some units that I think are better, but because this is more accessible and usable, I will probably rank them like higher because they're just easier to use. If you think that's a cop out, why the fuck do you use a berserker for farming? That's what I fucking thought. Second skill, 20% attack for the party. Power mod against demonic enemies. Defense of 30%, so 30% for each of these against div divine enemies. And a 30% battery. Demonic and divine actually do have a lot of overlap. Oh yeah, rip fucking Rama. Here's a, here's a farmer that has your power mod. And I would use him over you. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. You don't even have a power mod. It's super effective. Yeah, like some of these units like also have the divinity tag. Retra doesn't, but that because they are like the opposition. They are the antichrist. Yeah. Take less damage from divine uh, enemies. Do more damage. Yeah, against Divine Lancers, they are so fucked. This is what, uh, uh, 17, 18? 18 Lancers have Divinity, so they can't do shit to Charlemagne. He is just getting free extra damage on his MP. Third skill, 30% quick up, 30% crit damage, and if you're fighting someone evil alignment, another 50% crit damage. He makes so go many goddamn stars. Like it's not a it's not a question of if you can crit. It you will crit. After the first MP, you are going to crit. Yeah, you need all of his skills leveled. The this one number one, and then this two, because you like quick units don't get MP gain. You don't need all this extra uh, quick damage. This is yeah. Like base is more than what uh, Okitan get is what Okitan gets at max level anyway, 
So you should not be that concerned. This is the last one you level. This, then this. Writing A, so his quick card performance is good, whether he has this skill up or not. Third skill up or not. Anti-Berserker, just like Okitan. And 20 battery. The same shit. Same exact shit as Okitan. Yeah, so this is super effective damage. 12 hit AoE quick. Quick, quick res down after damage. I do think this is better than uh, the one turn quick up, but Okitan, I would say, is definitely more of a farmer, and Charlemagne is more of a challenge quest unit. He has more going for him for challenge quests. Because Okitan has crit, just not that much. Is way more. Yeah, so against six enemies, this is not the hardest thing to ramp up against. But against normal farming, it is harder to ramp this up. But it is not three turns. It's a five-turn buff duration. So even when all your buffs are gone, your MP is still going to actually be hitting pretty hard. And yeah, like Okitan does more damage, but Charlemagne has niches that Okitan just doesn't have. They're they're just like really, really, really similar. And again, this quick res down, it has nothing to do with farming. Might as well not even be there, but on a challenge quest, this is really gonna come in. Or if the enemy is like super high health, then you'll be able to follow this up and get more refund out of it than a quick buff would. Because again, multiplicative buffs, res down also increases your refund. So yeah, as much as it fucking pains me, as much as this fucking pains me, I have to put Okitan this year above. Just because like in practice, like for farming, you'd want the quick buff over the res down if it doesn't happen first. if. If he got his MP buff where quick res happens first, very different story. He's they're swapping immediately. Oh, we got six more, and then I can uh start smoking. And once again, I don't get to start smoking until four fucking o'clock. Uh I gotta start these earlier. I actually had to start these like nine in the morning. All right, time for Roland, Mr. Naked. Mr. I'm the reason Astolfo fucking cross-dresses. I'm the reason Astolfo just loves to fuck with people. Honestly, I'm... No, because there are CEs. There are CEs of this name, like, butt naked. Hold up, where is it? Yeah. And Astolfo is like, Charlemagne is like playing darts. And then these two are in the back room. Oh, I'm going to put a fucking dart board on my dick while Astolfo is holding a fucking dart. Like, they are having way too much fun in the CE. <sighs> This is like literally one of the best CEs because of that shit. I forget if this was Cal um I th I'm pretty sure this is Caldea Boys, but this honestly could have been like anniversary. All right, back to Mr. Naked. Super tanky from what I remember. 9.6k attack, 12.2 uh k d uh, hp. Low for a four star, but he has like a lot of survivability. Really low cooldowns. Like you are, you're not going to have that many issues. The year one number for MP gain with two hits. Yeah, like year one deck with just better hit counts. First skill, full turn at invul, 100% defense and a 20 battery. What does this fucking mean? 
unless someone has the wombo combo of defense pierce and ignore uh invul you cannot take damage this turn he actually can't take damage someone needs both of them or they need to be able to rip buffs off otherwise this is a free turn of they hit him and he gets free refund or you're just chilling and like no like even an mp that has one of them is not going to do much damage it's either going to get stopped by the invul or just like if it pierces the invul it's not you have 100% defense you take no damage second skill three turn buster buff 30% cleanse charm uh charm chance reduction like so he gets charm really easily what like what the fuck do you expect from some guy that strips butt naked and like gets snapped out of his delusion because astolfo his cousin from what i understand he's his cousin uh is wearing a fucking dress and you're like what the fuck are you doing why 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 is this the first thing i see when i snap to consciousness and then he eats off all enemy buffs full aoe buff strip this is sick this is sick skill lots of value the charm it's whatever if you're not fighting someone that can charm this literally does it doesn't mean anything third skill 20 stars 500 percent star weight 10 percent battery 500 damage to himself on a three turn cooldown you get this shit so fucking often it, like this is fucking awesome that he has uh, a skill like this i i love short cooldowns like this where like the value is fucking there like the value for this is fucking there doesn't have a standard 30 but even if you were to do buster farming you'd still have this when you need it like reduce cooldown with bitch or pop cooldown with bitch uh you have it for next turn pop again next turn cooldown with the bitch you'll have it back for next turn when you need when you uh bring out oberon and this will also be off cooldown so you can use you can use this a lot more than you think, even like in normal I wouldn't say farming, but you can use this a lot more than you think. Anti rider, Astolfo. Battery. Uh if you wanna have 50, start here. Uh if not, use whatever. MP ignores involve one turn damages to one enemy and he has actual ramp up. It's not the kind of ramp up we've seen with some of these recent units of like 50% ramp up like Zenobia has. Uh, but he does have ramp up in general. 20% uh, attack and crit damage. He just gets stronger uh, whether he's getting buffed or not. Uh, and he can kind of... I don't know how good he is as a solo unit but like this is he's like one buff away from like actually like soloing like a good amount of shit uh the issue is like if they were to give him a guts where the fuck would they give him a guts because are you actually gonna put a guts on this that it's like one of the tankiest it's like overkill for one skill you give an invul a dot like defense and a guts like it's like you're expecting to be fighting someone that removes defensive buffs and that guts. Actually, that makes so much fucking sense. Yeah, like a one turn, a one time, three turn guts. That actually makes so much fucking sense to put a guts on this skill. Because then it, it is definitively no matter what, you cannot kill him this turn unless you remove all buffs in which case there's no stop there's no saving you oh shit i never put mabe oh shit 
Oh shit. Okay. Uh I could, can't believe I forgot about this. Uh you can go here as a sub DPS. You're not that good. But you at least have a place. You have somewhat of a place. All right, Roland, where am I putting you? Nope, you're more fun. You're more fun than Sigurd. You're better than him. Yeah, I, I would. Uh, let's just check MP damage. But I probably would pick him over Sigurd, if I'm being honest. And he, like, he can actually do three turn farming. Well, it's not like he can actually do it. Starting from 50, but he should be able to do it. Yeah, roll in. That's some really good fucking damage. That's some really fucking good damage. Yeah, top of Buster Farming? Yeah, it's Roland. It's Roland and Iori. And Iori. How is Iori not on this list? Wait, what the fuck? Like, actually, Iori should be on this list. He's going to get beaten up by Iori. Like, no shot. Like, no doubt about it. But, like, his MP1 damage is actually, like, really respectful for single target farmer. Like, he's beating out five stars. Yeah, he's beating... He's beating out Benny Enma on niche when she's using 50. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. B, B, I think, is justified. B, I think, is justified. All right. Last four. One, two, three, four. Oh, boy, Gareth. Oh, the travesty. Oh, the travesty. All right, uh, AOE Buster. She is, she is not a farmer. She is not farming unless you're using Summer Chloe. Extremely low base attack for a farmer. Extremely low for a farmer. If she was even supposed to be doing that. HP, it's okay. It's not super high, though. It's okay, though. 0.82, year one saber numbers for gain with better hit counts. First skill, 20% arts and buster. 20 stars, uh, Saito has this exact skill. It's just called, called something different. Grant self sunlight battlefield. So technically she is, like, I guess support for Bargus. But not really. Guts, to, uh, targeted guts. Uh, okay, actually, yeah, no. No, I take that back. She is actually like support for Bargus. Because Bargus doesn't have a guts. And if Gareth can go down quick enough, like this is enough for Bargus to like really take advantage. Uh, 10 stars per turn. Again, Sunlight Battlefield. Buster up 30%, 20% battery, and inflex burn with when normal attacking. Okay, first off, is it the smallest fucking burn I've ever seen in my goddamn life? 300 burn for face cards. This shit is ass. Why the fuck? Like, what are you what are you gonna do? Is this to help enable Honey Lake? You like just use a command code. Just use a command code. Why is this 300? Should have made it a thousand. Magic resist B plus 18%. Riding quick, 8%. Anti saber because of fucking course. Knights of the round table, you all like to fight each other. And I'm sure Yuri would join you. And 20 battery. Uh, she cannot start. She, she needs more charge. She does not have 30. So this doesn't matter that much. MP, 
Four hit AoE to all enemies, increases attack for one turn, further increases if you're on a sunlight. Well, she, as long as she does not lose this buff, she will basically always have this 30% attack buff. And it gets 10% higher every overcharge. Yeah, so she has a lot of shit in her kit. She, it looks like she has like a lot of car buffs. Like this 50% buster, 30% uh, attack in her own kit. Oh, what's the... What's the what does her uh, MP damage look like? Well, let's see, let's see what this looks like. Bad. Bad. Bad for a buster unit. Holy shit. There's a fucking issue when the MP1 of four stars is completely blown out the fucking water by MP5s of three stars that everyone is going to have, especially when they keep buffing those five stars. Like, slightly stronger than Lily, but Lily is such a low fucking bar, it's not even funny. Like, Lily is, being better than Lily is such a low bar. Like, Vargas gets the pass because she can go higher, and, like, you don't care about the MP for her. You really don't care about the MP. Uh, like, the MP is to enable her gameplay. It is not to actually do damage. But, yeah, she is sit Like, Gareth is sitting so, so, so low on the chart. Like, best use case is unironically... Uh, enabling Vargas to do shit and giving Vargas a guts while like letting her get her buster buffed. That's about it. The unfucking fortunate. She she definitely needs more than one buff. Next, Keisuke. He immediately is going into extreme, extremely niche. He is okay as a support, but he is a different kind of support if you're running Shinsengumi. Good, ba uh, okay base attack for a support. HP sh probably should have been a little higher, but I think he heals. Uh, I might be wrong about that. Star weight, star gun, normal, MP charge, 0.81. Lots of refund comes from the face guards. And passively, I think, also MP. 20% attack. 20% MP gen for the party. 10 stars on a six-turn cooldown. 30% quick. 30% arts. 20 battery. If he's supposed to be a, a support, again, this is fine. Grants the party one attack of evasion, 3k heal for the party, and cleans all dots off. Not a full cleanse would be better, but I, I will take the dub where we can. Like... Uh, I don't think this could have been a skill on its own, but this is definitely his weakest one. This is definitely his weakest one because this is such soft uh, survivability. Uh, passives are not good. Need mana loading. And this is like the only append that matters for him is mana loading. This doesn't matter. It's cool he has it, but like it's you, you're clicking the cards for refund. You don't really care about damage with him. Party attack up scales with overcharge. So having like high copies of him makes him a better support, but we're only looking at MP1. 10 stars per turn for the party. And if you're running him with a Shinsengumi servant, which is, if you don't know who they are by now, Shinsengumi da. They get 50% crit on an arts MP along with the battery. 
he uh hold up yeah and then bonsi is where he like again the shinsengumi buffer specifically comes in uh party mp gen and crit damage for Shin shinsengumi go even higher I do think this is enough of a reason to warrant putting him in extremely niche, but I will admit that this is a cop out. Oh, please don't go away. Please, please, please. Thank you. I'm, I'm not going to deny that this is a, this is a pretty big cop out, but I like, like Nobukatsu, if you're specifically buffing teammates like this and the MP is somewhat spammable, I don't see anything wrong with prioritizing that as the reason you'd use the Serpent. Second to last Saber. We have Saber Medusa. Long time expectation that this character would come sooner. Uh, so the question is, what the fuck is Summer Medusa going to look like? Because Nasu is not against it. And this is the 10 year anniversary for Fate Stay Night. This could be like Fate Stay Night Summer and Nasu is writing it again. I could honestly see that happening. Uh, especially, especially if Fate Stay Night, uh, is getting released for all for most languages around summer. If it releases in August, you can I would bet probably a multi with someone that it would be Fate Stay Night Summer and we get summer cost like summer servants for Medusa, Medea, um possibly Jaguar Warrior too. Um, Durga like the focus would be Fate Stay Night but they'd add other servants too like Uriel and Steno are a combined servant like I, I could see that happening like depending on when they release Fate Stay Night because I really like to time the collaborations this character step above her competition high base attack and then stupid gains like gains that make oh like they're not better than okita's but she spams so much better than okita okita and um astolfo really need buffs because of how good medusa is like she stands out so high above them Fantastic hit counts. Even if even if she only has two hits on this, it's still two hits on 1.1. She's a quick unit. She's going to crit on this. Like, lots of game, but most of her game is going to come from her quick cards. First skill, Petrify, 100% chance. Bypasses stun immunity because it's Petrify. Crit damage of quick cards up 50%. And when you uh, use a quick card, you put a curse on the enemy for 500 for five turns. If you are using the CE that buffs up, gives you a power mod against cursed enemies, this is free damage, especially because that is a free CE and Black Rail is not free. Black Rail is not free. And just a note, yeah, ignore some resistance. Second skill, 50% battery, 20% attack, and crit damage against demonic ally allies get a crit damage buff. Issue is, you are not using these servants with Medusa. You're just not. Sith? This Sith? Maybe. This Sith also maybe because she has Curse Amp, but it's like awkward with you using two single targets like that and you're using a Saber with an Archer while Pretender, they'd be fighting the same enemies. Um, I 
Yeah, the only servant here that act genuinely could support her. non humidity. She doesn't have animal traits. Despite being a snack, like she doesn't have animal trait. So she doesn't really work with Vich. I like probably Vich darkness and Vich would like, you'd actually run. But again, that's not, there's not real synergy there. So this is like cool if they're on the team, but does, I'm sorry. Cool if they're on the team, but doesn't matter that much. That's why this is such a low number. Because she also does not count as demonic. Third skill is like one of the most like cracked survivability skills that if she's solo burns out really quickly. If she's not solo, this is probably lasting the full duration. 30% crit attack chance resistance. It this is going to stop like almost all crits she come that comes her way. Like that is a significant enough number. And then debuff immunity three times, three turns. The chances of you actually using all this out, uh, it depends on who you're fighting and it is overkill. Because if they're debuffing you like this, your invul is also not getting used up. So this potentially could be six actions or three, depending on if the MP puts a debuff and then it starts using this up. Awesome that she has quick up in her own uh, permanently as a passive. Makes these better and her MP. Anti Berserker, again, fucking awesome. And then for the sake of uh, 90 plus multi core farming, get this. It is. She can one shot Berserkers and she doesn't have that much uh, problem getting there. Even if you're not using Scotty, just AoE, Castori, or something. Nine hit single target to one enemy. Super effective against man attribute. Chance to petrify uh, whoever she hits, 40%. And all earth attribute uh, allies get 20% attack. And she is earth, so she gets a charisma on her MP. And then she also gets quick up uh, for one turn. Base 10, it's not a lot, but it might be the difference of you getting another MP or not. So take it. Take it and uh, enjoy it while you can. So, yeah, she is like just leagues, leagues above Astolfo and uh, Okita for ease of use and just like actual pure utility. She she's not janky to use like you could not like the curse. But my God, is she so fucking consistent? And the last one, the last saber for this list, and then I can relax for the rest of the night. Takiru. Eight samurai remnant saber. At first glance, you don't think this servant would actually be good at farming. 0.3%. Um, you would think that would be a death sentence for farming, but as Ibuki has shown and Summer Balks, I'm not mentioning Gilgamesh because Gilgamesh's gains is shit. Uh, because he's supposed to be fighting assassins. But point three, this is more than enough for them to loop a hundred percent. This is who I compared Muramasa to. They loop so goddamn much. You, they do splash damage, and they get their best refund on a chunkier enemy. And you make sure you kill that enemy. Base attack, very high. Like, really up there. Uh, slightly below Ibuki. HP, lower to compensate. But not super low, it's just low. Hit counts, awesome. Uh, unbuff, don't expect face guards to really do much. This heavy farmer and or getting buffed by other units. 
but it kind of makes sense when you look at this skill. So one time, three turn guts, 30% battery, you arrive with 3k, and every time an ally is defeated, you get a 25% battery. You are specifically meant to have fodder around this character that dies so you don't have to worry about refund as much. You can do some really meme sh shit with like Cheng Gong, uh, Abatrot, Arash, anyone that like can off themselves fairly e easily. Nobukatsu, you can use with this character. And speaking of Nobukatsu, does have double buster. So there is some usage. It's just obviously he's not Nobu. Even though I think Chiamon has to do with like Nobu's army or something. I saw like. I think it was Nobu symbol. Not sure. I, I don't know lo Samurai Remnant lore that much. I still have to finish playing. Second skill. 50% power mod against Divinity. 50% power mod against Demonic. Fucking rip Bozo Rama again. Unfucking fortunate. Hold up. I'm not done sandbagging. 42,000 to Rama's... That's just fucking unfortunate. That's so fucking bad. Holy shit. It's not even the MT. It's just in general. Oh my god. That is, that is so fucking tragic. That is so fucking tragic. Holy shit. Rip Bozo Rama, you cannot stop taking L's. Holy shit, why are they not buffing you? 30% crit damage. Oof. So this skill, the way it works is you have to be a little more tactical just because you're using up the MP damage. If your setup involves Oberon, you're going to want to save this skill for that Oberon turn just so he can double it. But you might run into refund problems because you're lacking a 30 arts buff and a 20 battery. It causes a little bit of issues. If you're not doing a standard three turn farming, because arts doesn't need uh ramp up like Buster does. Like you can do like double cast or max out all the skills and swap in Oberon and just nuke. Um, it's just not the smartest thing to do. But there is no time delay of you getting uh, your damage ramped up. So it gives that fl flexibility, and honestly, that is so much fucking charge. It's kind of stupid, but, you know, it's nice to have this option. Keep up resistance, 20%, 10% quick up, and divinity for extra damage. Get mana loading. I mean, like, servant, like, master, right? Anti-saber. And extra attack. This isn't like it, you get extra attack for extra damage. You wouldn't really, you're not looking for refund. This is going to help clean up the refund, but it's not, it's already low. It's not going to be good. This cannot save the refund. It's just going to, it's just going to help you do more damage. Might help you get refund, but it's not going to like be the reason you refund more. NP. You need to target who you want to kill. You need to choose who you want to kill. Because you put a 50% arts res down on one enemy. 50% and you're, and you're doing farming. This is multiplicative with arts buffs in a way that doesn't normally happen. You don't normally see, like, this is like Arjuna altar type of shit. He doesn't... Not getting a power mod, but if you're fighting divine demo or demonic, basically have you ha you basically have the Arjuna Ultra setup. There isn't the only difference is you can't ramp this up. 
but you do have res down plus power mod. And you can also reduce defense. So in challenge quests or drawn out fights when you're not just farming, this ramps up. Actually does have ramp up. And then even more power mods. Like Muramasa is going to do more crit damage. There is absolutely no doubt about that. But Muramasa has two like inconsistencies with his kit that he kind of shouldn't have. And he is he is solely relying on MP to be able to keep MPing. He needs to keep MPing. Like he needs the ramp up. Takiru does not need the ramp up. That's the difference. And with that, we are almost done with the list. So, single target buster, AoE quick, single target quick, AoE arts. We need, I need to pick between one of these three, these, and these two. Wait. Yeah. It's one of these, one of these. Personal bias, Dioscuri, because you don't need niche, even though this is nice. You don't need niche with Dio Scurry. Um, I do want to check this chart though to see what their damage actually does look like. Um, yeah, so considering you can get away with Black Rail like more with Dio Scurry. I'ma say like you like you probably only need like one face guard. Um Hajime. Yeah, like Trunk Sisters. I don't think this is a fair comparison, but this is counting you this is for farming. A aka you do not get face card refund. Like Dio Scurry's buffs just aren't enough. Like if you could use black if they could use black rail, they would definitely be up here but too heavily restricted from refund. Uh, and they do, like, that's the thing with uh, Dio Scurry. They want to do face guards. They want to be face guarding. Prunk Sisters, they want to, but not that much. They don't, they want to MP more than they want to do face guards. And Aji, uh, Saito, yeah, he's just MP spamming. His, his refund is just stupid. But all he is is MP spam. Yoskori can do does want to hit face guards and hitting face guards on Saito actively fucks him over. It actively fucks him over. Uh yeah. So last one. Mordred, Saber. Yeah, Saber, Salter, Mordred. Uh oh. So for this one, it's whatever one you really care more about. This is versatility. This is raw damage. And this is like Morgid goes to EX because you can use her in more places than just farming. Yeah. Yeah. Morgid has crit and is also able to keep up. If this was pre-buff Mordred, I wouldn't be putting her up nearly this high. But, like, she's not that far off from here. Yeah, it's just it's just a consistency thing. thing. Like, Ar Artoria is not... She's able to do Buster Brave Chains more, but, like, that is, she does not have actual crit. And Salter is spamming... Uh, is black rail spammer which again nice as a buster unit but not overall uh and i also want to point out that salter does need 
I'm pretty sure you need uh, a pen one. Yeah, I, actually, it, it goes the same for Sumanai, how he actually does need uh, a pen two level, and getting that on uh, MP1 is rough, to say the fucking least. Uh, it's even harder to get uh, extra copies of this unit, though. Like, you don't have to go as high like bonding as this one if you only have mp1 you can stop a little quicker but it's still fucking frustrating i they need to do something about serving coins all right uh but this is my tier list i know people can like change it move it around people can move up or down one uh but yeah this is based on my own playing experience and yeah so we're gonna save this And with that, we're done. Oh, okay. We're done with this shit. I need to go take a shit now. <laughs>